What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. here today to preach to you about the Lord Jesus Christ the one who laid down his life for you died for you at the cross dying the just for the unjust to reconcile sinners unto God Jesus Christ the one who was born of a virgin Lived a sinless and perfect life. Never sinned once, not in word, not in deed, not in thought. And he laid his life down to the hands of lawless men, sinful men, who beat him, who mocked him, who scoffed him, who bruised him. And they nailed him to the cross. He was crucified, he died, he was buried. But then, hallelujah, he rose again on the third day, defeating death. And now he sits at the right hand of the Father. But he will return someday to judge the living and the dead. And this Jesus Christ, who died as a suffering servant, a, a lamb to the slaughter, the lamb to the shearers is silent, so he was silent before his mockers and scoffers. He suffered and died for you. As the scripture says, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes you can be healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid upon him the iniquity of us all. And this Jesus Christ commands all men everywhere to repent. Because there is coming a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness. Are you ready to stand before Jesus Christ? To give an account of the things done in the body, whether good or evil? Are you ready to stand before Jesus Christ, who has eyes of fire and a double-edged sword coming out of his mouth? He's not going to come back to suffer again. He's not coming back to be in a manger again. He's coming back to judge this world. Is coming back to judge the wicked, the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and He's going to judge your life. You know, young man, mumbling under your breath shows you're a coward. That's what it shows. Mumbling under your breath shows you're a coward. If you got something to say, come say it. I didn't hear you. Still can't hear you. Got lawnmowers in my ear, man. Speak up. No, hell doesn't await me. Hell awaits sinners. Are you a sinner, young man? Are you a liar and a thief? 
Are you a porn watcher? A drunkard? A drug user? No. You haven't lied before? I have lied, but that was a long time ago. Yeah, but you haven't got forgiveness of sins for that, have you? Yes, I have been forgiven. Are you living in a, hol a holy life right now? Yes. Then why are you saying that people who hold these signs, hell awaits them? Where does the Bible say that? Sure does. They're idolaters. They don't follow Jesus Christ. Wait a minute now. You're, are you claiming to be a Christian? Yeah. And you think Muslims are all right with God? I never said that. I said okay, so are Muslims going to hell? Hey, the Bible never explicitly mentioned Muslims. Don't have to name, Islam wasn't around when the Bible was written, so it's obviously not going to mention them by name. But the fact is, they are, they are idolaters. Well, they, they're all idolaters, though. They're not trusting in Jesus Christ. I mean, this is elementary Christianity, man. If you're claiming to be a Christian, elementary Christianity is John 14, 6, right? Do you know that scripture? I, I don't. You'd probably know it if I said it. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. So if someone tries to come a different way, are they right with God? No. But then, then that's what this sign is saying. You're, you're just pushing people away with this sign. I'm pushing people away with the truth? You're pushing people. This is not, this is not how Jesus crossed the line. No, that's not true. Well, they didn't have vinyl signs because they didn't have vinyl back then. But they, no, but they didn't hold up signs of any sort. They didn't. they didn't have signs. But they went out and preached the Word of God, and this has the Word of God. Are you telling me putting the Word of God on a sign is wrong? I never said that. Okay, so then I, it's okay to do this then. Well, then what are you saying, young man? Make your objection clear, because this is the Word of God on a sign. They went forth and preached the Word. I'm preaching the Word with my mouth and with a sign and with a hat. And with gospel tracks, and with an umbrella, and with a shirt. None of these things are sinful. It's right over here, man. Then why don't you show that part? I am showing that part. You were on that side of the sign. Why, did, why don't you put that on both sides? Okay. Why do I have to put it on both? Who said I have to put it on both sides? Why you, you want to limit me in the way that God doesn't limit me. Uh, God doesn't limit me to doing that. And when you see in the scripture, when Jesus Christ preached in the Gospels, and when the disciples preached in the book of Acts, you don't see them preaching on the goodness of God every single time they preach. Of course not. But... Okay, so then why are you telling me I didn't have this on both sides of the sign? And I was, just, I was just preaching on the goodness of God a second ago, preaching the Gospel, the good news. And you mumbled something on your breath and kept on walking. And that's why I confronted you. Now the Bible says a cowardly will not inherit his kingdom. It sounds like to me, young man, that you are more afraid of what men will think of you than what God thinks of you. God expects you to stand up for truth and righteousness. No matter how men respond to you. No matter what they think of you. It seems to me, you're more concerned about what men are going to think and what men are going to do to you than what Jesus Christ thinks about you and what God thinks of you. I live for God's approval, not for man's approval. No, I live for God's approval, not man's approval. You can call it whatever you want. Scripture. What God commands you to do. Take up your cross, deny yourself, and follow him to lay down your life for his sake and the gospels. Doesn't seem to me like you're willing to do that, young man. Are you even gone outside the United States? Ever? I've preached in Ireland. I've preached in Canada. I've preached in Israel. I've preached in the Philippines. Wait a minute now. You asked me I went out to the United States and I gave you four places I've gone outside the United States. Now you're going to criticize that? What for, for what reason? To preach the gospel. All four places to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Not for vacation, not to have a fun time and buy a bunch of stuff, not to be a tourist, but to preach the gospel. Yeah, where's my popcorn when I need it? Why did you go to predominantly Christian places in the first place? Wait a minute now. Ireland's not a Christian place. It's Roman Catholic. Philippines is not a Christian place. It's Roman Catholic and idolatrous pagan. Israel's Jewish. Canadian's not a, that, that Christian by any means. Where are you getting this from? Even America isn't predominantly Christian. No, it isn't. Has a facade of it, but it isn't Christian. Most people who say they're Christians really aren't Christians. I know you have more. Let's let's hear more objections, young man, because everything I've told you is straightly straight from the Bible, and you have nothing to say about it. There we go with the stereotypes. Because I have a sign with God's word on it, I'm all all of a sudden I'm Westboro Baptist. That's garbage. What's that? Because how? How? With that sign. Because I have a sign? 
Do you go to every billboard on the highway and say, oh, Westboro Baptist, Westboro Baptist, Westboro Baptist? This has God's word on it. And you claim to be a Christian, you're criticizing a sign that has God's word on it? Something wrong with you, young man. Seriously wrong with you. If you're criticizing a sign that has God's word on it. You're ashamed of God's word, aren't you? Would you be willing to hold a sign with God's word on a public place? Yes, but not like that. Why not? What's wrong with it? Because I can tell that that's not your original, that's that not your interpretation. That is, you obviously bought that. No, no, I made this. I created this from scratch. You want to try again? I created these files, both sides, from scratch. I had someone print it for me. I bet. You bet? Are you calling me a liar now? I'm a graphic designer by trade. This is what I do. And I created these. So you want to try again? You want to make another false accusation against me? Young man, you need to listen to God's word. In fact, you need to open God's word, read it, and obey it. You don't seem too concerned with that. You seem more concerned with falsely accusing a preacher of God's word. Really? Are you, are you actually ordained? Am I ordained? Yes, I'm ordained, but what does it matter if I'm ordained or not? God tells all Christians to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That's your ordination, young man. If you're claiming to be a Christian, that's your ordination from Jesus Christ. Not from a man, not from a denomination, not from a local church, from Jesus Christ. That's all you need. That's all you need. If you claim to have eternal life, how dare you keep it to yourself? How dare you? Shame on you if you keep it to yourself. Jesus Christ died not just for you, but for everybody. Yes, Jesus Christ died for all, and that's why we're here today, to preach to you the words of life. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. Death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Yes, sin. Sin equals death. Sin leads to death. But Jesus Christ, trusting in Him, Obeying him leads to life. He wants you to have life. Many of you, you think life is sin. Your life revolves around sin. Your porn watching, your drunkenness, your sexual immorality, your social media, your TV shows, your movies, your cigarette smoking, your drug use. For many of you, that is what your life is all about. When can I have some more fun? When can I get entertained some more? So many of you are like, that's not real life, that's just death. That's just a waste of time. The scriptures say, see then that you walk carefully, not as fools but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Many of you are so oblivious to the time you're living in. It's an evil time, a wicked time, a time that calls evil good and good evil, that puts darkness for light and light for darkness, bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. And the Bible says, woe unto those who call evil good and good evil. We're living in wicked times where people think homosexuality is okay. Sure, you were born that way can't change. That's the way God made you. Sure, you can marry someone of the same gender. In fact, you can be born a male on the outside, but feel female on the inside. You can be born a female on the outside, but feel like a man on the inside. And that's okay. Transgender fluidity. Let's just be fluid. Today I'm a man, tomorrow I'm a woman. The next day I'm a dog. Next day I'm a cat. Transgender nonsense. And this is being accepted in our society. I never, 10 years ago, if you would have asked me if this would have been possible, never would have guessed it. But that's the evil time we live in. That's what the Bible says. See then that you walk carefully. Well, how do you walk carefully? Well, if I gave you something to put together, like a, I don't know, a piece of furniture, if you, I said, put it together carefully, surely you would get the instructions out that came with it. You'd read the instructions carefully and follow them to a T. And to walk carefully, to see then you walk carefully, 
means you need to get the instruction book for life out, and that's called the Bible. If you really want to walk carefully, you got to get the scriptures out, got to get the Bible out, got to get God's Word out and read it, study it, believe it, and obey it. Memorize it, hide it in your heart. That's how you walk carefully, because the, the days aren't good, the days are evil. Uh, eventually, the next step in this whole redefining of marriage nonsense will be, okay, now a man or a woman can have multiple husbands or wives. And then the next step after that is, okay, well, uh, let's, let's lower the age of consent. Let's allow a young child to marry a man or a woman. So there'll be pedoph pedophilia will be the step after polygamy. And then there'll be bestiality. And then there'll be people who will, who will marry inanimate objects, which is already happening in some places. And so this day, the days are evil. The days where they call good evil and evil. The days when they want to tolerate Islam, which wants to kill people who aren't Muslims. But you don't tolerate Christianity where Christians want people to be saved. They want good for them, not evil. And so people call Christianity evil because it's the truth. And they call Islam, okay, let's tolerate it. Are you going to be a coward, young man, and run away? Or are you going to come over here and talk? Is that a drive-by? Is that what that was? A drive-by coward? Sounds like it to me. Yeah, Islam is of the devil. Christianity is not evil. Christianity is the truth. Christianity is good. As long as it's based upon the Bible. But of course, there's different versions of Christianity that aren't based upon Scripture, like Roman Catholicism, Lutheranism, you know, certain forms of Baptist theology. We must not, you know, hold to a certain denomination or a certain teacher, but to the Scriptures. God's Word is what we must hold, our, hold fast to. And only then will we be found faithful. Only then we will we be found in the truth. But in Islam, in the Quran... Allah says about himself, as he revealed it to the supposed prophet Muhammad, that Allah is the greatest deceiver. And in the scriptures, they have someone similar to that. I don't know if those words exactly are used, but there's someone in the Bible who's called the father of lies. Sounds pretty similar. In the Bible, he's called Satan. In the Quran, he's called Allah, the greatest deceiver. That's who Allah is, the greatest deceiver. And that's who the devil is in Christianity, the greatest deceiver. He comes to deceive you. There's actually a doctrine in Islam that says, it's called taqiyah, that allows the followers of Islam to lie to the infidel to further their religion. And that's exactly what we're going through here in America and all around Europe. And you see what the end result is. They come flooding in, they take over, they rape women, they do all kinds of filthy things, and that's what Islam is all about. But Christianity cares for your soul. Jesus Christ cares for your soul. The devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Jesus Christ came to give life and life abundantly. And most of you still serve Satan through your sin. 1 John 3, 10 says, In this the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God. Nor is he who does not love his brother. Yes, if you do not practice righteousness, you are a child of the devil. Earlier on in 1 John chapter 3, it says, He who sins is of the devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. What do you got to say, Mocker? I have Jesus. No, you don't. I'm a Catholic. That's part of the problem. It's no wonder why you're a Mocker. You're a Catholic.
You know what I noticed at WKU is lots of cowards walking around who do a drive-by and run away. They'll say something nasty under their breath and keep on walking. They'll mumble something under their breath and keep on walking. They'll make false accusations against the preacher and keep on walking. They won't stand their ground because they don't have ground to stand on. You're still doing it. The Bible says, do not marvel for mockers will come in the last days walking according to their own lust. Most of you college students are so caught up in pornography, you wouldn't know what real love and sex is. You're too busy looking at two-dimensional images on a TV screen. Fulfilling your lust, gratifying your lust by watching a computer screen or a TV screen. These days it's usually computer screens. Back in my day, it was TV screens. They had the, the filthy place in the dirty corner of town that people went to. They didn't want anyone to see them going in or going out. Now people have access to it right in the comfort of their bedroom, right in the darkness of their, the privacy of their bedroom where no one else can see. Well, guess what? God sees. God sees what you're doing. The Bible says the eyes of the Lord are in every place, keeping watch on the evil and the good. As God is watching the evil you do, He knows about the evil you do, and He's going to call you to give an account for the evil you do. You know, the scriptures say in Ecclesiastes 12, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep His commandments, for this is man's all. For God will bring every work into judgment including every secret thing, whether good or evil. See, all the secret things, all the things you're hiding from your best friend, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your parents, all the things you think are hidden, nobody knows about, your deepest, darkest secrets in the recesses of your mind, God knows about it. God's going to bring in the judgment. What are you going to do on that day? You have nowhere to hide. The fact is, God knows about it all. So I encourage you to get right with Him today. To give up your sin today. To follow Jesus Christ today. For He is your only hope. There's no hope in your religion or you're going to church. You're being baptized if you don't forsake your sins. There's no hope in your religion, your works. If you don't forsake all of your sins and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation. He is the only way. The moon God, Allah, cannot help you. The greatest deceiver. Why would you want to trust someone who calls himself the greatest deceiver anyway? I mean, what kind of relationship can you really have with someone who admits to all of his followers, I'm the greatest deceiver? There's no relationship there. You wouldn't even have a boyfriend or girlfriend who says, well, I, I lie all the time. I'm the greatest liar in the world. There'd be no relationship there. And there's no relationship between the followers of Islam and Allah, except for one of hate. Allah hates them. He doesn't care for them. Otherwise, he wouldn't lie to them. You know, it's very simple. It's the Ten Commandments say, number nine, thou shalt not lie. Revelation 21.8, every liar shall have his part in the lake of fire. Basically bookends of the scripture, Exodus 20, and then we have Revelation 21. It's very simple. But how many of you have lied already today? You might be lying to me right now. See, someone who is perpetually a liar, how can I trust anything they say? We can't. There's no relationship there. But God calls liars to repent of their lying, to be honest, to be truthful, even when it costs them something. I'll tell you, one of the most difficult things to teach a child is to tell the truth even if it gets them in trouble. Because you know what? Someday, they're going to stand before, just like you, the one who knows everything about every white lie, every half-truth, every fib, and he's going to judge you for it. But he offers you mercy if you'll repent. He offers you mercy if you'll stop your sinning. 
He offers you mercy through the blood of His Son, Jesus Christ, who died for you on the cross. It's like a substitution. Instead of you giving what you deserve from God, which is hellfire forever, God receives Jesus Christ's sacrifice in your place. And if you repent and trust in Him, you can have eternal life. So you really have two options. You get what you deserve from God, and since you're a sinner, you deserve hell. Or you get what you don't deserve, with His mercy and His pardon, His kindness, His friendship. And I began this friendship with God about half my life ago, 19 years ago. I was in the military. I was in Fort Bragg, North Carolina. I loved my drunkenness. I loved my lust. I loved my sexual immorality and my covetousness and my lying and my filthy mouth. I loved my anger and my fighting. I loved to get in fights. But I gave it all up for Jesus Christ because he deserves my life. He deserves my all. He deserves your life. He deserves your all. Jesus Christ died for you. Won't you live for him? He deserves you living for him. There's so many you'd rather live for your sexual morality, whether it's a heterosexual sex outside of marriage, or whether it's sodomy between a man and a man, or it's lesbianism between two women, you'd rather do things your way. But the anthem of hell is, I did things my way. That's the anthem of hell. I did things my way. Well, as the old song goes, that's the highway to hell. You're going to end up in hell doing things your way. Because God is God. God is supreme. He is sovereign. He is the King of kings and Lord of lords. He has rules and laws for you to obey. And when you refuse to do what he tells you to do, just like a just judge, just like a just cop, you're going to be in trouble. I was reading an article recently about how this uh, government official in California... Someone came up to him, I think, in the middle of a speech and threw a pie in his face. And you know what the court considered this as? A felony. Not because a pie in the face is going to risk is going to endanger his life or possibly kill him, but because of who he is. This man is going to get charged with a felony for putting a pie in someone's face because of who he put the pie in the face of. And every time you sin against God, you shake your fist in his face and say, I'm not going to have you to rule over me. I'm not going to do as you would have me to do. I'm going to do what I want to do. And because you reject the greatest authority there is, you'll receive the greatest punishment there is. Hell fire for all eternity for sinners. For fornicators, for drunkards, for potty mouths, for liars, for thieves, for lustful porn watchers, for Muslims, for Buddhists, for atheists, for Mormons and Jehovah Witnesses. That's what awaits you. But there's still mercy available for you now. You're living, you're breathing, your heart, all be involuntarily, is pumping blood through your veins. Your lungs, albeit involuntarily, are pumping oxygen through your body and discharging carbon dioxide that you might continue to live. And you rely upon God for all these things. Your heart can start pumping today. It can stop pumping today. Your lungs can stop breathing today. And what will you do then? When God says, okay, time's up. Game over. He demands your life of you and calls you to give an account. What's your question, young man? Yeah, you. Where do I buy one? Well, I made it myself. I designed the sign. I had someone print it for me, but I designed it. So if 
What are you talking about? Uh, yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't recommend psychotropic drugs, drugs that alter your mind, because that's called pharmakia in the scriptures, called sorcery in the scriptures. Yeah, it's part of the problem. So much of this generation is just all drugged up. Yeah, well, your medicine probably gives you 99 problems, all the side effects it has in it. Why would you take a medicine that has 99 side effects but one supposed good thing for you? It's kind of illogical. No, I would never use marijuana. Never have and never will. No, I'm not missing out on anything. You're missing out on sober life. That's what you're missing out on. Sobriety is what you're missing out on. Having control of your mind. I've been hammered before. Hell yeah! Do they look drunk you're to you? A you're a Do they look drunk to me? Do they look drunk to you? You say they're missing out on sobriety. Pretty sure they're sober right now. Uh, well, they might not be high right now. I haven't spent enough time around them. But I was, I've been around people who've been high. Back when I was in high school. And in my preaching days, too. I've been around people who are high. And they're not, they're not acting normal. All they care about is munchies and listen to the Grateful Dead. That's not normal. That's abnormal. Well, back in my day, it was Grateful Dead. Today, it would probably be fish or somebody else. I don't know. I don't keep up with it anymore. Fornicator. What's a fornicator? No way. What's a fornicator, young man? I'm not saying. That's, that's a sin. Sex outside of marriage. Well, that's, that's part of the problem with getting hammered. You don't have self-control. You do things you wouldn't do. I mean, when I used to get drunk, I would wake up places and not know how I got there. Well, it used to be. No, I live a holy life. Yeah, I've done, mo I've done a lot of these things on the list, but not anymore. Oh, yeah, a lot of those. No, no, a lot. I didn't say all. A lot. No, I've never been a homosexual. Never, never been that depraved. Uh, yeah, I was a drunkard, a thief, a liar, fornicator. A hypocrite? Well, I, yeah, I've been that before too. Not anymore though. No, well, can you prove that? Well, prove it then. What is a hypocrite? A hypocrite is someone who does... A hypocrite is someone who does the opposite of what I tell people to do. So if I, would, if I went out tonight and got drunk, I'd be a hypocrite. If I went out tonight and looked at pornography, I'd be a hypocrite. Yeah, well, if you're thirsty, there's something called water. Because beer doesn't quench your thirst. Beer doesn't quench your thirst. If I go to a tailgate, it'd be me preaching at a tailgate. Where is it? Huh? The valley, just scream. the valley? I don't even know where that is. Yeah, but you don't have to be these things. You know, when I was, I became a Christian at 19 years old, all these things that you see in there, I chose to forsake those things. And more. There's th things that aren't even on here that I forsook. Well, they don't follow Jesus Christ. That's just one problem. What about Buddhists? They're, they're mostly atheists. That's part of the problem, Buddhist. And Buddhism doesn't require you to believe in God to be a Buddhist. Buddhism, Buddhism is simply moralism without God, which doesn't get you anywhere. Well, I was raised a Catholic. I know a lot about them. There's not much right with them. Not much right with them. No, actually, I love everybody. I don't hate anybody. And my, and my mother's not a Catholic anymore. She's a Christian now. I, I, don't, I don't watch football. I don't follow football. Yeah, it's not, that re I know he's joking, but that reveals a lot about him. That he thinks it's more of a sin to not watch football than to fornicate. Are you wearing I might be, but I'm not, a, I'm not a Jew, so it doesn't matter. And, 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 yeah, but, but first of all, I'm not your sweetie. Se secondly, Mama, Mama, you got the whole secondly, it was only two different types of clothing that you couldn't wear together. It was wool and linen. I'm neither wearing wool nor linen. It's going down. It's going down. 
Come when don't follow. Happy yes, to say to me down. that you are not. That you are not. Yes, it's closed. Bro. If that's okay because Get that's Jewish, I'm sorry, Heaven but the James. whole Bible is what you follow. Not the Bible verses you pick and choose. Well, if you listen for a second, I just explained it a second ago. That, well, I don't have to listen either. The scriptures don't say I can't wear polyester and cotton. It says I can't wear wool and linen. I'm not wearing wool and linen. So even if that were applicable to me as a Gentile Christian under the new covenant, it doesn't apply to me because it's not wool and linen. This is cotton and polyester. Says who? Says who? Now, wait a minute. Didn't she just judge me? Didn't she just judge me? That's a judgment. You hypocrite. You're a judgmental hypocrite. You said I can't judge, then you judge me. That's hypocrisy. You know, it's ironic that when someone judges the preacher, there's no uproar about it. But when the preacher judges the sinners, oh, you can't judge. Judge not lest you be judged. Judge not is one of the Ten Commandments, right? So people say, yes. That's another drive-by. So a loudmouth woman goes off me for 10 seconds. So what? What, another loudmouth woman go off me now? Go ahead. Take your turn. Okay. I don't hate my parents. No, sinner. No, sinner. I won't shut up. No, I won't. You call yourself so respectful. You're going to disrespect a woman who just... She disrespected herself by the way she treats herself. Must treat others. Watch your fucking mouth, fucker. What? Where's fucking security to escort the fucker off this campus? Because you don't like me, right? my mother to my face. Are you insulting me to my face? No. You're not? By dropping f bombs, you're not insulting me to my face. I don't give a fuck. Oh, see the hypocrisy. So I, so I can't supposedly insult her mother, but she can insult me, right? Like the f bomb? No, I, God doesn't like it either. I don't give a fuck. Obviously. I'm yep. But you will care. You will care someday. Yeah, you will. When you stand before God to give an account. Hey, Kerrigan. Good. Of every thought, word, and deed, you will care then. You will care then. Why the fuck would any of us want to be in heaven with you? Hell sounds so much better. Well, hey, that's your choice. You can be a sinner and burn forever if you want. It's up to you. There'll be no party in hell. No party in hell. No getting drunk in hell. No fornicating in hell. No sodomizing in hell. No being a lesbian in hell. No smoking weed in hell. I don't smoke. I didn't say you did. No smoking weed in hell. You'll, you'll be the reefer in hell. You'll be the one smoking in hell. I like girls, so that puts me on the homosexual list. I, I thought you were leaving. I have sex and I'm an atheist. I thought you were leaving. That's it. You can't leave, can you? You can't leave, can you? Yes. These people, every time I go to Kyle's camp, I say, well, I'm leaving. They'll come back five more times to argue some more. You know, God, well, you can say, I... I know, I know why you don't like me, because I tell the truth, and you hate the truth. You're not a lover of the truth. That's why I make you mad. Okay, I knew it. Like that boy that was wearing green that you made almost cry. I almost made him cry? That was my job. Oh. So let's, let's get into emotionalism now. Let's forsake truth for emotionalism now. Now that boy, that boy... That boy, who's probably 20 years old, can stand up for himself all he wants. Doesn't need you to do it for him. Doesn't need mama to do it for him. He can stand up for himself. It's my job. It's your job to do what? First of all, you're not a good person. You're not making me feel better. Why should I care about you? You insulted my mother. Well, I thought you made everybody feel better. But that was your job. Yeah. Walk in contradiction. God commands all men everywhere to repent. You may think it's all fun and games, but on Judgment Day, all the games, all the fun will be over for sinners. Today is a day of salvation. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord. And he will have mercy on him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. You know, draw near to God, he'll draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament 
and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourself in the sight of God and he will lift you up. You know, so many of you treasure your sins so much, you couldn't imagine one day without your sin. Most of you men here couldn't imagine one day without your pornography. At least you're being honest. Most of you men here couldn't imagine one day without your sports idolatry. Without your football and your basketball. Football season ends, what, in February now? And then you got to go right to scouting stuff and looking at the draft. And then we have to look at fantasy football and then training camp and then preseason. It's a never-ending thing. Some of you are so caught up in sports idolatry, you think it's a sin not to watch football. See? For some of you, it's other sports. Many of you, you're so hooked to your phones, you can't detach them for five minutes. You're so connected. It's like you're hardwired attached to your phone. You can't, can't disconnect for five minutes. It's idolatry. You know, if, if you were attached to your Bible as closely as you were to your phone, this world would be a lot different. There'd be a lot less sin, that's for sure. You can have a Bible app on your phone, but how often are you bring it up? Is it one of those unused ones or one you're bringing up every day? You watch Family Guy? Um, not uh, cable TV, not satellite. If I watch TV, it's usually commercial free like video on demand, like Amazon or something like that, or it's a DVD. Sometimes. What do you think about Bear Grylls? Bear Grylls. Well, as far as I know, he's a Roman Catholic. So I care for his soul. I want him to be saved. And, and, and I've watched his show a few times, and, and he's to stop getting naked on the show. He's going to stop doing it. Oh, I typically don't wear shorts. Favorite TV show. I don't really have a favorite TV show. Yeah. See, if you care, what's, what's your favorite Bible verse? Can't give me one. See, it's the same. That's where we're on different planes here. I can give you lots of Bible verses. You can give me lots of TV shows. I can't give you any TV shows. You can give me lots of TV shows. See the mindset there? I don't mind. You see the mindset there? Your mind is focused on the TV, on the world. My mind is focused on God and His Word. That's where your mind needs to be. The scriptures say, how can a man keep his way pure? By hiding God's word in your heart. I don't mind if I take a picture. Just, just don't touch me, that's all. Oh. I'm your number one fan. Yeah. Oh, I can't. No, actually I'm married, have lots of children. If I'm gay. No, I don't want anyone touching me. Okay. Yeah. Jesus would touch you. What did you say? Oh, she loves it. She knows I'm doing God's word. I couldn't find it. I lost it. But but hey, hey, my my wedding is dependent upon a piece of gold on my finger. I'm I'm faithful to my wife, and she's faithful to me, whether we have a wedding ring on or not. She probably takes it off when she She well she she lives at home. She works at home, so she, she probably does. Like she's washing the dishes or changing a diaper or cooking a meal, she probably doesn't have it on. What'd you say? You're, you're, so you're backslidden again, I see. That's what I figured. She's another hypocrite. Another, another, another tragedy. Another tragedy along the way. Another Christian gone off the path into the broad path that leads to destruction. What'd you say? Okay, sure. That's why everybody laughed, right? That's why you won't repeat it, right? That's why you won't repeat it, right? Yeah. Yeah, if you're really a Christian, you'll actually obey God. That's part of the problem. So many people claim to be Christians, but they don't even try to obey God. Their, their, their Bible has so much dust on it, you can write the word damned in the dust. They, they may go to church on Sunday, but they don't actually obey God. But like, does the Bible say no one knows who's going to heaven or hell? No, the Bible doesn't say that, actually. You just revealed your, uh, your ignorance about the Bible. It does not say that. The, of the Bible, yeah. She, I mean, when she says the Bible says no one knows who's going to heaven or hell, that's ignorant. 
That's a lack of knowledge. The Bible actually makes it in very clear terms who's going to heaven and hell. All throughout it. Where do you want me to start? That's not true. Says who? Says who? Where? Where does the Bible say you can't do that? The ironic thing, this young lady says that you can't tell someone whether they're going to heaven or hell, but all throughout the Bible, Jesus and the apostles do that very thing. So I guess they're sinners, huh? No, it tells you who is and who isn't. Yeah, I'll give you two. I'll give you two. But yeah, I do. It's, it's right in the Bible. Okay, I'll give you the first one. Open up your Bible, the First Corinthians chapter six, verses nine and ten, which says that. Yeah, it does say that too. Yes, we'll get to that next. First Corinthians chapter six, verses nine and ten. Hey, if you got a smartphone, get it out. My name doesn't have to be on it. I'm not doing the things that are found on it. It says, uh, do you not know the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? So first question for you students, are you unrighteous? No. If you're a sinner, you're unrighteous. If you're a lesbian, you're definitely unrighteous. You're not going to inherit the kingdom of God. And then it says, no, not anymore. Not anymore. No, no, I live holy. Not even close. And then it says, listen, because it says, do not be deceived. So many of you are already deceived. You think that you can be unrighteous and inherit the kingdom of God. Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor covetous, nor thieves. Nor drunk, nor drunkards, oh, nor dr I already said that. Say them again. Can you send me that? Nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. Clear as can be. Can't get any clearer than that. And then Revelation chapter 22. Harry Johnson. I don't even know who he is. No, absolutely not. No, no, I'm not. I'm not voting at all. I, I, hey, listen. If there was actually a decent candidate, I would consider voting. Oh yeah, of course. It, he's the king of my life. Of course, I'd vote for him for president. I didn't say I wouldn't respect them. And the Bible doesn't say I need to respect them. Say I need to honor them. I don't, I don't listen to rap. But hey, but back in the day, I used to listen to Snoop Dogg and Dr. Dre, if that helps any. But they're, they're sinners on their way to hell, so why would I listen to them? Tupac and Biggie are already in hell, waiting for them. Says a lesbian. So said a lesbian. As if, as if a lesbian knows what's demonic and what isn't. When you, when you're involved, <laughs> when you're involved in demonic things. Hey, hey, hey! Newsflash, newsflash. No such thing as a lesbian Christian. No such thing. My name is actually very Irish. Yeah. What's that? Well, hey, listen, when you're preaching the truth, you're going to find people who don't like you. What can I say? Yeah, I mean, watch all you want, but I stick to the Bible, stick to the scriptures. I don't care what my naysayers say about me. What I care about is the Bible. My favorite kind of porn is the one that's in the garbage. That's my favorite kind of porn. My favorite kind of porn is one that's, that's deleted permanently off your computer and off your phone. That's my favorite kind of porn. My favorite kind of porn is the porn you repent of and stop looking at. If you kill red ants, that's a sin. Not a sin to kill red ants. Kill them all you want. But when it comes to the Bible, this is God's word. 
That's what God's going to judge you by. You know, fall is coming upon us. The grass is going to wither. The flowers are going to fade. But the word of God endures forever. And you will be judged by God's word. No, I don't. Okay. Okay, this young lady asked a question. I'm going to answer it. Yeah, Bible verse for that? Yeah, okay. Okay, so... This young lady, what's your name? I'm Lexi. Lexi. Lexi asked me if I sin. Okay, so it's when I when I answer it yes or no, it, it's really misconstrued and misunderstood. So I'm gonna explain what I mean by that. Okay, you asked you asked it in present tense. Do I sin? That's present tense. Right now I'm not sinning, no. If you said have you sinned, I would say yes. If, if you say will you sin in the future, I'd say, Well, I don't know, but I have no plans to. No, I I don't have no plans to. No, the Bible doesn't say that. Hey, hey, when you when you touch the most important doctrine of someone's life and disagree, they walk away. It's the most important doctrine because hey, listen, if it's right, we sit every day. She can be a lesbian Christian, right? I am. But when the Bible says go and sin no more, Lexi can't deal with that. You're a liar. When when Jesus Christ says be perfect, your heavenly Father is perfect. Lexi can't deal with that. When the Bible says in 1 John 2, 3 through 4, now by this we know that we know him, if we keep his commandments, Lexi can't deal with that. And if she says it, it's got to be true, right? You know what's amazing about Hannah Montana or whatever, what's her name now? Miley Cyrus. These, these people, these people, they come and go. They come and go. The devil chews them up and spits them out. For example, Lady Gaga. Who's heard of Lady Gaga? Okay, so. So Lady Gaga, she seems to be losing her popularity. Because the devil has used her to her extreme, to the most he can. And now he's done with her. He's going to chew up and spit her out. And so, you know, when people become famous doing, by doing wicked things, they eventually fade away. People will forget about them after a while. Like I don't even know who he is. He's a yeah, he's probably a journalist for a newspaper. Just a journalism student. That's an interesting camera. That's pretty old looking. Yeah, so, you know, you're right here. You're at the beginning of your semester still. How many here are freshmen? Raise your hand. Freshmen? Okay. Yeah. How many here are on the four-year plan? Anybody? Okay. Are you freshmen, are this your first time away from home? Yeah. Then your parents loved you. They kicked you out for being a pothead. That was a very loving thing to do. So they weren't enabling you any longer in your pottery. Yeah, so you young people you need to learn something, okay? When I was your age, I thought to myself, I'm invincible, I'm going to live forever. But the fact is, people die every day who don't think they're going to die that day. You look at the obituary today, you'll find some young people there. My own sister, my sister died at 37 years old. That's young. 37 years old. And you young people who live a very dangerous life and sinning is the most dangerous life you can live. Because every day you sin, you're in danger of going to hell. So it's a very dangerous life to live to be a lesbian or, or a fornicator or a drunkard or a pot smoker. Very dangerous life to live. How are you? And so God expects you hey, to give up your sin hey, how are you? and follow Him. How are you? Because the ways of sin is death, really? but the gift of God is Why? eternal life Why? through Jesus Christ our Lord. Hey, how are you? Why are you so as you go about your semester reading your textbooks, Why? your science books, your history books, whatever books you have to read. Oh my God. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, you, you know, yeah. wow. I heard someone say, let me interrupt my message for a second. I heard someone say something recently okay. that this generation no. No. is the most narcissistic generation there ever has been. Because you're so obsessed with taking selfies all the time and posts on Instagram and Facebook. You're so self-involved. Really? But Jesus Christ, I didn't say you can't take a picture of yourself, but you're so obsessed with it. You're so obsessed with taking pictures of yourself. Oh, here and there and ever. Let me take 50 to make sure my facial expression is just right before I upload. Right, ladies? Before I upload it. Why? 50 pictures. Don't, oh, that's not right. Oh, let oh, me say it really? a different way. Really? That's so narcissistic. Right. And and the Bible says the exact opposite. It says to take up your cross, deny yourself, and follow Jesus Christ. Deny yourself. That's intelligent right there. That's, that's intelligent. That's logical right there. That's rational right there. That's intelligent right there. You know you've won the argument when the only thing they can do is ramble in your face. You know you've won the argument. Hey, stay back, man. I no, why are you spying me? No, you need to stay back me here. I don't need to, you know that? Well, you because can... here is the public, you know that? Yeah, why? I can't even understand what you're saying, young man. I'm racist, I can't understand what he's saying? What? Hey. What? Are you speaking Spanish? So if a oh, Spanish-speaking person comes to you and you can't understand what they're saying, you're racist if you can't understand them? You're deluded, man. You're deluded. You don't think them properly. Oh, really? So you have a mental problem? Really? No, I don't have a mental problem. Oh, I also have a... What are you thinking about have a mental problem? Why? I didn't say you had a mental problem. Oh, yeah. So you say you, you're thinking about have a mental problem? No, I didn't say that. Are you racist? Hey, yeah. guys, you raised us Asian, you know? Yeah! yeah he there it is! Asian. Red flag! He yeah. raised us, you know? How can we do, you know? He yeah. raised us, you know? Yeah, why you. That's what this generation does when they don't oh. like somebody. They call him a racist because oh, really? then everyone gets on his side, right? Oh, really? He's a racist, racist? now. Racist. So you're racist? <laughs> There you go. Join in the party, Lexi. Oh, really? Call the preacher a racist. So, yeah, oh, yeah. You want to back it up with some yeah. facts? Oh, really? So I'm all ears. Want to back it up with some facts? What? Didn't think so. What? I cannot understand. What? You know, Jesus what? Christ, What? he died for every tribe, what? tongue, and nation. What? Oh, really? Jesus really? Christ shed his red blood. Oh, you're being pretty gay right now. For you. No. You're being pretty gay right now. Well, I am very happy. Yeah, so I'm very happy, but I'm not a sodomite. Can I hold your sign? No, you may not. Can I touch? No, Can I touch keep it? Keep your hands off my stuff. Oh. But Jesus Christ, who was a Jew, picture olive skin. He died for every tribe, tongue, and nation. What's that? Oh yeah, because the Jesus that teach you about you can race the people. I still, right? I still can't, I still can't oh, hear you, man. Come a little closer. This guy's rambling in my face. Something about Jesus Christ in America. Yeah, no, no, what I was saying was, Jesus would have looked more like Osama bin Laden. Yeah. Than the current rendition of Right, he didn't have blonde hair and blue eyes. He didn't look like an Italian. Okay. Hold on, it messed up, it messed up. Yeah, go ahead. Can you smile? Can you get in it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, see? Narcissism at its worst, right here. Everyone wants to take a selfie with the preacher. Go ahead, man. Get in. That's a small phone, man. What is that? It's an iPod. Like three or something like that? Yeah, it's like an iPod. Okay. Yeah. What's the, what's the purpose of this again? To spread the word of God. Right. Spread the truth of God's word. I've been here like 10 minutes. I want to hear like, Can I have a picture I want to hear like love and like, like good Well, I, I would get to that, but I'm, I'm answering people's questions yeah, and objections right now. Ignore the bad stuff, man. Just spread the good stuff, man. Yeah. Be careful. Yeah. Don't touch it. Ignore the bad stuff. You're interracial. Right. Yeah. Can you just say on camera that homosexuals are going to hell? So God commands all men everywhere to repent. Is it true? Because it's coming a day in which he will judge right. the world in righteousness. So, um, you know, the Lord Jesus going, Christ, about 2,000 years ago, are they going to hell? Was born of a virgin. Are, are they going to hell? He lived a sinless and perfect yeah. life. Si right. You're not sinless. He, I'm talking about Jesus, Jesus. Christ. Perform miracles, signs, and wonders, attesting to who he is. 
But our homosexuals he, really go He to preached hell. the truth to thousands and thousands of people. Our homosexuals calling them to repentance, rebuking the wicked. And after about three years of ministry, after about three years of ministry, he laid down his life into the hands of lawless men. And they beat him, they bruised him, they crucified him. He was dead, he was buried, and on the third day, he rose again from the grave, yes. and now he sits at the right hand of the Father, and he commands all men everywhere to go and sin no more, to stop your sinning. Like literally every day. No, that's what you do, it's not what I do. No, literally every day you sin. No, I don't. If you go no, I don't. Let's, and that, let's, let's analyze Lexi's statement. Right. Now, how can Lexi know if everyone sins every day? The Bible says so. Well, give me a Bible verse then. Bible. Give me a Bible verse. So. Give me a Bible verse that says that. Every day we fall short of the glory of God. You know, that doesn't say that in Romans 3.23. doesn't say every day you fall short of the glory of God. It says, for all have sinned, past tense, ed at the end of sinned, right. sinned, and fall short of the glory of God, which I agree with. But it doesn't say to sin every day. In fact, in uh, you know that you know that God calls men perfect in the Bible. God called Noah perfect. And and Genesis chapter six and verse nine, God says about Noah, "This is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generation." Noah walk with God. Young people, your attention for a second. If you go here, you'll become like them. If you go here, you'll become like them. Don't come here. Don't come here. Go to a Votech school, learn a trade. Don't come to this abominable place. Yeah, so God called Noah perfect. So, so if we have to sin every day, how could God call Noah perfect? How could God call Job perfect if we have to sin every day? That doesn't make any sense. God must be a liar, according to Lexi. To call Job perfect and call Noah perfect. I mean, he must be a liar, right? But the Bible says God is not a man that he should lie. And God is holy, holy, holy. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. You're right. The Alpha and the Omega. The first and the last, the beginning and end. No, Look Chi Omega. But just, no, Chi Omega. But just because you no. can quote a Bible verse doesn't no. mean you're a Christian. I am a Christian. No, I'm not a lesbian Christian. No, I hate a Christian. You have to repent of your lesbianism no. to be a Christian. No, I hate a Christian. You have to repent of your hatred to be no, a Christian. I hate a Christian. I'm not a hate, you didn't Well, I didn't say you were, Lexi. You're hating yourself. I don't hate myself. By sinning, you do. I'm by sinning, you do. When you sin against God, you don't love yourself, you don't love God, you don't love anybody when you sin. Yeah, that's his name. It's not what he is, though. No, I am not a Christian. Yeah, so a Christian is someone who obeys the Bible. Someone who loves God and loves people, and you are sitting here judging everybody around this Are you judging me? And you are no better than Are you judging me? You are no better than Says who? So sit the hell down, boy. So says the potty mouth. It didn't help you. didn't help you. It didn't help you either. I wasn't raised as a preacher then. I don't have to be God. This person and this person. I don't have to be God. It's to call the Bible. It's judgment. You're a hypocrite, sinner. You are too, hypocrite on your way to hell. Just eat with the rest of us. No, I'm not a hypocrite. You're a hypocrite on your way to hell. And you need to repent. No, I'm okay with God. Go ahead. I'm living holy. He ain't okay with you. So says the sinner. God teaches love. Now, listen. When, listen. when, when a hypocrite comes up to me in Daisy Dukes and tries to tell me what the Bible said, I'm not going to listen to her, okay? You know, when someone's dressed like that, it's a sure sign they're not a Christian. Sure sign. You know, the Bible says that godly woman will dress modestly. Not with Daisy Dukes and tight clothes on. Yes, I'm not a good Catholic, then. Well, there's no such thing as a good Catholic, because Catholics are sinners by definition. Oh, wow. I know this by, by experience. I was a Catholic myself, and most of my family is still Catholic. Well, 
Not on everything, but I'd say on the Bible I am. God has called me to be a friar. That means loving every heart, not just a select few. Who said I'm not loving everybody? Well, wait a minute now. Let's let's listen to Revelation. Is this true, young man, Mr. Fryer? Is this true? Are people going to hell? Is hell gonna be empty? Well, hold on, hold on. Is hell gonna be empty? It's waiting for me. You're gonna be there. Well, you don't know. You better open the Bible and find out. People who don't love like you. This, you know, here's the irony of it all. This is Isaiah 5:20 in action right here. Woe unto those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. And so, it's amazing to me. No, 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 no. You may not. Get your hand off my stuff. Don't touch my stuff. Keep your hand off my stuff. It's not your campus. What's your name? What's my name? Yes, sir. Kerrigan. Kerrigan? Skelly. Skelly. K e r r i g a n. Skelly. S k e s k e l l y. Do you have a Twitter? Stop being so hateful to me. Why is that? Stop being. Get your hand off my stuff. What? It's my stuff. Why? It's called private property. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So exactly. when someone tells oh, yeah. somebody exactly. the truth, it's oh, automatically yeah. exactly. hate. Oh really? But when someone is tolerant, when someone is okay. tolerant of every evil there is, they're loving supposedly. Okay. But where does the tolerance stop? Where does the line draw in the sand? Yeah. Are you are you tolerant of child pedophilia? Right. Tell him, buddy. Answer the question. Are you tolerant of child pedophilia? Can you say that real quick? Nope. Can you say, like, I need to win? Yeah! If you're not, if you're not tolerant, yeah! then why? Kai Omega! Yeah! That's yeah! the answer, yes. You know, I know Dragon Ball. Yeah, uh-huh. You live in a fantasy world, man. Go ahead. Yeah. Go, go, back, go back to your dorm and watch your cartoons. Yeah. And fry your brain on them. Yeah. Yeah. So where's the line drawn in the sand? Yeah. Where does the tolerance end? Yeah. Because this generation thinks tolerance is a virtue. That you just tolerate every evil out there. Otherwise, you're not loving. Can you say well, where does the tolerance end? Are you tolerant of rapists? Why not? So, why are you tolerant of sodomites and lesbians? Well, I'm, I'm not just talking, you're talking to everybody in general, but I appreciate you responding back. So, but if you're not tolerant of rapists, then why are you tolerant of other evils? Who watches when I masturbate? You see, the problem is, you want to make up your own... You want to make up your own right and wrong. Your own morality. What's evil about loving someone? That's not love to lust for them. Okay, no, no, go ahead, you can ask the question. You've been waiting for a while. Damn word. I actually have a question. Go for it. Do you use condoms? No, I do not. Do you not use condoms? You're savage. Um, okay, what's your name, young lady? Uh, my name is Irrelevant. Irrelevant here, interesting name. Uh, Irrelevant here says that, um, I, she asked me a question if I advocate safe sex. Uh, the answer is yes. The question is how do I define safe sex? I define safe sex as sex between one man and one woman right. and a monogamous marital right. relationship. Okay. And that's the only, oh. out of my face please, that's the only sex I endorse. Right. All other sex, hold on, I'll get you to get irrelevant, hold on irrelevant, I'll get right back to you. All other sex damns you to hell. I don't care how many condoms you use, I don't care if you use spermicide, you're, you're using birth control, I don't care if you're a virgin with another virgin, if you're not married, if you're not a male and a female, it's the most dangerous sex you can be involved in because it's going to send you to hell in the end if you don't repent. Preach the gospel. Yes, you're relevant. What's your question now? We're playing bingo with the things you said. For a child who's with an STD, we're going to have a relationship after marriage. If that STD is are you allowed to get any medication for it? Okay. Are you allowed to There's a lot of questions there from, from Irrelevant here. Am I a pot smoker? Irrelevant's asking questions about a child being born with an STD. First of all, if a child is born with something, it's not their doing. They're innocent. 
Okay. They haven't done any evil. Okay. Children are not sinners. <laughs> what are, what are children are innocent in God's eyes. <laughs> if a children dies, they go to be with God. They're innocent. Okay, so that's one thing. Number two, <laughs> that person gets mad. I mean, what kind of STD are we talking about here? I mean, you can be born with syphilis without sure. Sex. That's one that's not curable. I understand that. But there are some that are, most of them are curable, from what I understand. And so I've never had one myself, so I don't know that, that much about them. But yeah, that person getting married, I would suppose, out of love for their spouse, they would tell them everything. They wouldn't hold stuff back and be like a surprise, right? They would expect them to know what's, what's going on so they know what they're getting into. And if, if they know what they're getting into, then I think that's, you know, that could be loving. To be sacrificial in that way. To, to want to still be with that person out of love for them, even though they might have some hindrance, some kind of bad thing happen to them as a result of it. Okay, so if you are in a married relationship, oh my God. it's the wrath of who? Even though you are married, yeah. Well, there's nothing. I have nothing against using condoms in a marriage. In the, in the Bible, it says that you can't use a condom. Doesn't say that at all in the Bible, actually. Yes, it does. The Roman Catholic Church teaches that, but the Bible does not teach that. In the Bible, it says that the main. It's the wrath of who? Well, no, you can. You can Procreation. You can That's the primary purpose, but not. There are secondary purposes. You can have. God made sex pleasurable for a reason. Between in, in the right boundaries. There's nothing wrong with having pleasure in sex. There's women who can never get pregnant. They try and try and try and try all their life. God doesn't damn them for having sex. That's that's ridiculous. I, I, have, I have a little bit of a question. And so and so yeah, there's there there can be uh, pleasure in sex. In fact, anything that the Bible doesn't say you can't do, I would say you probably can do. Right. Okay, so there shouldn't be any sodomy involved. Okay, so but if you want to know, what, if, listen, if you really want to be a Christian and know what the Bible says, read, if you are married, I would encourage you to read the Song of Solomon. You'll find out what true passion and love and sex is all about within marriage. What about tattoos? Uh, okay, Irrelevant acts about tattoos. Um, well, that's what she said her name was. She gave me her real name, then I'll tell, call her by her real name. Out the mud. And so I mean, it might actually be her name. I don't want to insult her. And so she's asking about tattoos. Now, in the Old Testament, there was, you were said you cannot make markings on your body. Okay? But in the Old Testament, they were making markings on their body to, to be involved in paganism and idolatry. Okay? No, no, what? I'm not, not done yet. Okay, so. Hey, can you shut the fuck up? I'm out of I can't think of one good reason for, to get a tattoo, personally. Can you shut the fuck up? No, I wouldn't do it for that either. Can you say oh, I you for my dead relatives. I'm a pot smoker. Well, I didn't say that either. I said I wouldn't do that. You're asking me what I would do. I said I wouldn't do that. Hey, can you shut the fuck up? I didn't say it's necessarily sinful to do that. Shut the fuck up. But when it comes to why would I put a mark on my body? I don't have to remember someone like that. I can remember someone by remember what we did together. Looking at pictures, looking at videos. Talking to people who, who knew them as well. There's other ways to remember somebody. I can put something on the back of my vehicle. Shut the fuck up. Memorializing them. As a man of God. As a man of God. Deadly put, man of God. Shut the fuck up. Shut up. Shut up. No. Get off. Get Shut up. Off my pole. No fight. Keep your hands off my property. Do you understand? No fight. Do you understand? No fight. Do you understand? No fight. Do you understand? Keep your hands. Well, you need to understand, sinner. Can you shut up? Here no. is a school. Yeah, it's a school. That's why I'm here to give you some learning from God's word. I'm here to give you some learning from God's word. No, I don't. Okay. Care. I don't need to. Then walk away. I don't need to care. Then walk away. No, I need to walk away. Well, then you stay right there. Well, I need to it's walk public away. property. Oh, really? Yeah. Fuck out, man. This is not a party. This is a property. You know, it's not your private. You're what confused. Fuck? You're confused. Oh, really? I'm confused. Yes. I yes. think you have a confused, you know that. No, I'm not confused. Can you, can you shut the fuck up? I could, That's but I'm not annoying, going to. You know that motherfucker. I could, but I'm not going to. What? I rebuke you in the name of Jesus, you oh devil. Oh, what the fuck? Get behind me, Satan. Oh, I rebuke really? you in the name of Jesus Christ. You have no authority here. You have no authority here, so you what? devil. No authority here. How many demons you got in you, man? How many demons you got in you? How many demons you got in you? How many demons you got in you? I rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ. You have no authority here, sinner. No authority. No authority here. Eugene, hey, Bobby was trying to call you. Eugene, Bobby wants you to come to a No authority, Senator. No authority. Yeah, you're good. You're good. Don't worry about it.
There's no need to take it that far. Take what that far? By saying how many demons do you have? Like what? he has demons. Yeah, he does probably have demons in him. Wouldn't surprise me. No, that's so fucked up. Like well, seriously. Well, so says the lesbian Christian. Right, right, because I'm fucking a lesbian and a Christian. And right. It's no, it's impossible. And so does a potty mouth Christian too. Right, because I'm fucking cussing. Congratulations. But that's ridiculous to provoke. So, so like cussing and being lesbian is okay to be, but to tell someone they have demons in them, that's that's no, wrong with a Christian. No, just go around telling people. Oh, that. I don't go around telling people. Just because the first person I've told that in a long time. Just because you think that they're wrong, just because they're cussing. Nothing to do with them being wrong. Just because they he, are actually He hasn't said anything intelligent the whole time. Okay, I don't know what you're talking you're about. You're upsetting people. You're literally upsetting people. Well, no, you upset yourself. Your I preach the Bible. You stay around and you don't like it, so you upset yourself. I'm upset because I'm a Christian. You're, saying you're not a Christian. Me. I am. No, you're not. No, 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 you're not. In the Bible, it does say that you can cast demons out of people. And if he legitimately has a concern about demons being in somebody, but he you can't, can't, you can't, you can't just claim that people have them. Yeah, you can. Says who? Says you? Because you you actually think as a lesbian Christian you have some kind of discernment that you right. need to give to me? If right. If you believe in the gifts of the Spirit, then you believe that he can, if he, okay, if he if believes he can see it. Okay, So it says you. But what I'm saying is, yes, Hey, listen. Yes, Jesus Christ died for you, and he commands okay. you to live for him. And I do that. It I really is that, that simple. I am a And Christian. if you're sinning every day, you're the very opposite of living for Jesus Christ. Okay, but everyone you're the opposite. every day. Literally, no, that's not true. Thinks, yes, it is. That's totally true. You know, you know, repeating something like a mantra doesn't make it true. Okay. And you still haven't given me a Bible verse, Lexi, for that. Okay, do I have you're a Bible verse right now? No. There I'm is no, but you'll never have a but Bible what verse I'm for it. you is that people may sin every day, but that does not mean... What you say does not determine my relationship with Jesus Christ. Now, what the Bible says, I'm repeating what the Bible says. And I've been in church since I was. Doesn't matter if you've been in church. I've listened to the Word of God. And Doesn't I've matter if listen to the Word of God because if you don't do the Word of God, you're deceiving yourself. Okay, but by you telling people where they're going. James chapter right, one, not right. verse twenty-one. That's not you Therefore, God. lay aside That's not all you filthiness That's not you and overflow like of wickedness, and receive with meekness the implanted Divine word. Meekness. Which is able to save your soul. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. I'm not deceiving Many of you, you've heard the word, you've been to church, you've heard the word of God preached. Maybe you listen to the word of God in an audio Bible, maybe you read the Bible, but you don't actually do the Bible. You're not doing You that don't right do now. what it you're says. And because you don't do what it says, you're deceiving yourself. Well, I want in on And I day, encourage right? you to stop deceiving yourself. Oh, hey, let me in. Hear the word of God and obey it. <laughs> do it. Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the word, not hearers, only deceiving yourself. You know, Jesus Christ said in Matthew 7, he said there's two, two gates and there's two paths. In Matthew 7, 13 to 14, Jesus Christ said, Enter by the narrow gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way which leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it. But narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way which leads to life. What's your and name? only few. I'm in the middle of preaching right now. No, 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 no. no. What, what's your name? And no, answer my question, please. I don't do what you tell me to do, okay. Senator. If you, are, did you come here with your Enter by the narrow gate. Did you come here? For wide is the gate. And broad is the way which leads to destruction, and there are many who go in by it. But narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way which leads to life, and only few find it. So says the rude sinner. So says the rude sinner. I'm preaching the Bible, and he wants to interrupt and demand an answer of me right now. That's real patient. That's real loving. You're going to tell me what Christianity is and what Christianity isn't? How old are you, young man? How old are you? How old are you? Says who? Says who? My age is irrelevant to you. It is relevant, because you're a novice. That's obvious to me. Exactly. Was your true intention to come here to support Christianity and Jesus? My true intention to come here, as always is, is to preach God's word, the goodness and the severity of God, 
and let it fall where it may because you have free will. And this sinner can say whatever he wants about me does not matter to me one bit. I don't, you did just judge me. You're a hypocrite. You just judged me. You just did. You're a liar. Now you're a liar. Now you're a hypocrite and you're a liar. Now you're a hypocrite and you're a liar. And you're a slanderer too. You know the reason that people do not trust Christians. Sure, that's what it is. That's what it is. Someone preaching the Bible is the reason why people don't trust Christians. But a hypocrite like you, who fears man more than God, is the reason why people trust Christians. Because you won't stand up for God and you won't stand up for His Word. You fear man. So what if they say that? What just, that so what if they say that? I don't care if they say that. It doesn't make it true. People lie all the time. Listen, let me tell you something. If you stand before Jesus Christ on judgment and say, you know what, the reason why, Lord, I didn't become a Christian because that guy in WKU that one day, it's not going to be good enough. God, like I said, you know what? I'm so sorry. You're right. Come on in, fornicator. Come on in, drunkard. Come on in, liar. Come on in, homosexual and lesbian. That guy was messed up. It's my fault. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Judging. 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 You just did. You're so deceived. You're so deluded. This is actually what you, this is your opinion. No, you're, this is your perception. Because you're, no, no, you're, you're deceived and deluded. You don't think you're judging, but you actually are judging. Do you have parents? Did they spank you growing up? Was I born in a test tube? I mean, Mr. Skelly. You obviously need a good spanking, what you need. Mr. Skelly. Your parents should discipline you a little more. What motivated you to come out here? Were you educated? Who taught you Christianity? Where did you learn that from? The Bible. The Bi okay. Who taught it to you? The Bible. No, it didn't. Because what you know is not from the Bible. What motivated you to come out here today, sir? What's that? What motivated you to come out here today? Jesus Christ. The Bible talks about you. The Bible talks about you solely. People like you. Yeah. Give me a Bible verse for that. You are going. Give me a Bible verse for that. Give it to me. You are going to be accountable. Give it to me. Give it to me. Where's the Bible verse? I have one for you. Why do you look at the speck of I don't have a log in my eye. And I'm not trying to take a speck out of your eye. Yes, I am judging. Nothing wrong with judging. Uh, actually, no, yeah. that's against hypocritical judgment. People who have logs in their eyes taking specks out of the other people's eyes. And they go on to say, first take the log out of your own eye, and then you can see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. And then Jesus goes on to say in Matthew 7, to judge people by their fruit. Jesus is not against judging. There's a day called Judgment Day. God's not against judging. Well, I didn't say I was, but I will judge people on Judgment Day. 1 Corinthians 6 says that. The saints will judge the world. That's what it says. Saints will judge the world. I know people are largely ignorant of these facts, but the saints will judge angels. That's what the Bible says. But you know what I found? People who are most vehemently against judgment is people who are guilty. People who don't like feeling guilty about their sins, they're under conviction about their sins, and they don't want to give up their sins. That's the fact. You know, if I'm innocent, I have no problem going in a courtroom before a just judge or a just jury. If I'm guilty, now I'm scared. Now I'm fearful because I'm not innocent. I have something to be judged for. But listen, if you're living a holy life, you have no reason to be concerned about judgment. Because judgment has to do with punishment. And if you're living a holy life, you, you have nothing to be judged for, for by God. Because you're living holy. You've forsaken all your sins. You've given your sins up. Like God commands you to do. You know, in the Bible, there's a whole book called Judges. Where God appointed earthly men to judge other earthly men and life and death. Do you know that Moses, God gave Moses a law that said, if someone does this, stone him to death? That's from God. God's not against judging. God's against hypocritical judgment. God's against judgment according to appearance. But he's all for righteous judgment.
You know what I'd like to do? Just go to one college campus and have a reasonable discussion with people. What's that? I'm very reasonable. I have no problem being reasonable. But when people try to drown me out with music or get in my face and yell at me nonsensical stuff or misquote the Bible, I mean, that's not reasonable. Yeah, what, what, you have a question? I, just, I think you were here last time I was here, too. Yeah, I don't really have a question or anything. I was just saying, like, if you want to talk to people, I don't want to yell at you. Yeah, I'm not here to yell. I'm talking loud so people can hear me. Does anyone have any questions about the Bible? Well, give me one. Now, now you see, now, that's the kind of, that's the kind of unreasonable questions I'm talking about. I mean, are your minds always in the gutter? Is it really funny to laugh at the stuff that God hates? God hates sex and morality. Why would you laugh at that? Sure don't. No, I have a wife. And I'm not tight wound. I'm just fine. I'm just serious because it's a serious subject. This is a sober subject. It's not something to laugh about. I love laughing. You ask, ask my friend if I like that. I mean, I'm. I, what? I expect that from a sinner like you. You won't wish that on Judgment Day. And I know why you think that about me because you're a sinner. If you weren't a sinner, you wouldn't think that about me. You got more? More what? More shit. Come on, throw more shit at me, man. This is the truth, man. Just the truth. I care for you. I don't want you to go to hell. Really? I don't want you. I want you to end up getting what you deserve for your sins. <laughs> really, the last time somebody cared about me, they weren't being an asshole. Well, that's that's your perspective. No, On Judgment Day, you'll know how much I loved you and cared for you. No, man. And you would have wished. On that day, you, if you don't repent before then, I hope you do. I mean, you still have a chance. On that day, you would have wished you would have repented. You would have wished you would have heeded the message I gave to you. You know, in and, and Luke 16, the rich man cried out in torment in hell. Listen, man, I'd rather be in hell without you than heaven with you, if that's what you're waiting for. Well, there you go. It's your choice. Place to be, man. That place to be. So if it's not a bad place to be, then pour some gasoline on you and light yourself on fire right now. Let's see how much you like it. It sounds a little mean, man. I don't think let's see. Well, I'm, I'm exposing the hypocrisy of your statement. You said it sounded like a fun place. I don't think being on fire sounds like a fun place. Tell me what kind of fun you can have while you're on fire. I, I got to hear about this. Tell me what kind of fun you can have while you're on fire. A lot. Like what? Give me one example. Tell me when Jesus told you that it was cool to tell people to kill themselves. What's that? When did Jesus tell you that it was cool to tell people to kill themselves? Jesus told me to kill I was obviously being facetious. You didn't pick up on it. Either that or you want to falsely accuse me. I feel bullied. I feel bullied. Well, yeah, because feelings matter the most, right? Feelings matter more than truth, right? Yeah. Well, I am talking to him. Well, I'm not here to convince you of anything. I'm here to declare the truth to you. I'm here to declare the truth to you. And you choose your own free will whether you're going to believe it or not. I can't make you believe it. I can be the most persuasive person in the world, and you still can reject it and go live the way you want to live. It's that simple. But obviously this young man is trying to false. I know he's not that... Uh, ignorant. He knows I was being facetious. I would simply point out the verbal hypocrisy of his statement that he thinks hell is going to be fun. Well, if it's so much fun, then get the party started now. But you know it's not going to be fun in hell. You can't tell me one thing you can do for fun while you're on fire. It's not meant to be fun. I could come up and give you a hug if I want. Hell's... No, I, I won't be there. See, you won't be able to hug me. So th th there you go again. So, it's not meant to be fun or pleasant. Hell's a place of punishment. Hell is God's jail cell for sinners who refused all their life to give up their sins and follow Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ died for you, and the only proper response to that fact is that you lay down your life and live for Him. I have another question for you. I have another question. Have you asked me yet once what my religious beliefs are? I don't have to. Do you know anything about my personal religious beliefs? Hey, where's your camera, dog? If you don't, then you have no way to... Wait, do you have a camera on? Just information.
That's really none of your business. I'm talking to him right now. Yeah, so he asked me if I know what his religion is. I know it's not Christianity, I'll tell you that much, because of what comes out of his mouth. Out of the mouth comes the overflow of the heart, Jesus Christ said. When filthy words come out of your mouth, you show you have a wicked heart, you need to be saved, you need to be cleansed, you need to be changed and transformed. That's what you show. And so all I... What's that? Well, there's lots of reasons why. I don't, where do you want me to start? Why are they not going to hell? Well, why are they not? What do they do that's good? They kill the infidel, they take over countries, they rape women, they're polygamists. You've been watching too much ABC, CBS, and CNN, I see. Hey, listen, if they come here and take over, you'll see what I'm talking about. You'll know I was telling the truth then. Not every Muslim, no, not every Muslim as a whole. We're speaking in generalities here. You asked me about Muslims, not every individual one. But the, the religion as a whole prom promotes wickedness. Allah himself, in the Quran, Allah calls himself the greatest deceiver. Now, if your God calls himself the greatest liar, why would you want to follow him? How could you even possibly trust him? In the Bible, you know who's called the greatest liar? The devil. The devil? Allah. Same thing. So you see, Allah is the devil of the scriptures. He's not uh, really God. Well, so wait a minute now, because someone professes to be a Christian and they light an abortion clinic on fire, that means Christianity teaches that? There's a disconnect here, young lady, because Christianity does not teach that. Islam teaches that. Islam teaches wickedness. Christianity teaches holiness. Christianity, Jesus never once taught, oh, there's an abortion clinic, go light it on fire. He tells you to love your enemies to do good to your enemies, to preach the truth to your enemy. That's what God tells you to do. He doesn't tell you to light them on fire or burn down their buildings. Mr. Scarlett, I just have one brief question. How do you perceive the state of the Christian faith in America today? Apostate. Apostate. That's how I perceive it, for the most part. Very few are actually Christians. Well, I can't say everything your teacher teaches are false. I mean, I, I don't sit in your classroom and listen to everything they say. I'm sure there's some truth being taught here, but of course I don't believe in evolution. It's a fairy tale for grown-ups. Science fiction. You might always believe in Star Wars, Star Trek, fairy tales, uh, the Tooth Fairy, Santa Claus, the Easter Bunny, if you can believe in evolution. But I know why people really believe in evolution, because they don't want God to exist. They think it gives them some kind of intellectual excuse to say that God doesn't exist, the Bible is wrong, and therefore I can live whatever way I want to live. That's the real reason people believe in evolution. Well, I don't have any problem with science at all. Number one, let's clear that up. Number two, evolution is not science. Okay, science fiction. Number three, can evolution coexist with the Bible? Absolutely not. Yeah, absolutely not. Because it contradicts the scripture. Scripture is God's word. God's word will never return void. But you like economics. So it's it's. What's the contradicting part of it? Well, and if you look in Genesis, you read Genesis chapter one. Capitalist. It says the Bible it says that the world was created in six days, and the seventh day God rested. That's where we get our seven day week from. You know, Sunday through Saturday. That's where we get it from. And so, no, there's no there's no millions of years, no billions of years. No, anything like that in the scriptures. You are a sinner, that's right. That's not how life works. Is this how you make your money? No, I don't make any money. I, I pay money doing this. Why? It's a waste of your time. Well, for a sinner like you, it's probably reprobate. It might be a waste of time, but not for everybody. You could go, like, help the church for real instead of doing this. This is helping the church. You don't know anything about the church, and I don't take advice from sinners. I went to I'm not taking advice from you. But I've been to Catholic schools. I don't care about Catholic schools. They're wicked. They're apostate. They're not true. That's not true Christianity. That's not even real. Says the sinner who went to Roman Catholic school. See what it's done for you? It made you into an atheist. A lot of good different. You want to give me advice in the Bible and you're an atheist. You just gave me advice three or four times. Says the sinner. Yeah, says the sinner. Of course you think that. I have no denomination.
I, I've been a pastor of a Nazarene denomination, the Southern Baptist Church, and now it's a non-denominational. We're just Bible-believing, Bible-obeying, born-again Christians. So, I shouldn't doctor with your wickedness, right? You're Phil. No, he does not know God. He's an atheist. I'm an atheist. I'll take that on. What do you think? How do you feel about thieves, man? Well, it says right here. I'm not playing your whatever that game is. Is that a bingo or something like that? What is that? Let me see what that is. Oh. Is that like street preacher bingo? What is that? What is it? Bingo card. For what? For you. For me. It's a bingo card. Yeah. I can tell that music had a bad influence on your life, man. No, 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 not that music. That music. That's demonic, man. Oh, Lord, man. That's ten Hail Marys for you, bro. Just as bad. Probably just as bad. You don't like the Osborne? Ozzy Osbourne? Yeah. Absolutely not. Why not? I love him, but I don't like him. I want him to have uh, eternal life. I don't want him to go to hell. What about Queen? Oh, the Bohemian Rhapsody? Yes. I mean, I used to listen to them. But I look. There you go. So what happens to sinners? They die of their sins. They go to hell. So, so we die of our sins, but you don't sin. So are you immortal? No, I I die physically. I don't die in my sins though. So are you a ghost? The only way I won't die physically is if Jesus Christ comes back before I die. Are you abused as a kid? Otherwise, I will die physically. But I won't go. I won't die in my sins. I'm, I've, I've been for, forgiven of all my sins, and now I live a holy life. The same thing God commands you to do. Why do you feel like you have the right to evolution? No, it's not science. And I want to know why you think you have the right to evolution. Because it's, it's just, I've studied it, and it's not based upon fact. It's not based upon uh, observational science, reproducible science. Uh, where do you want me to start? None of it's based upon observational science. No, you may not. I said so. Because you're wicked, that's why. Hey, uh, hey, preacher, hey, preacher, my boyfriend is a where did you go to school? Yeah, so I've studied those things. I mean, you can't observe you go millions school? of years the transitional fossils. You don't, first of all, we don't have any transitional fossils. No, we don't. No, we don't. No, we don't. All the ones they try to use as that have simply gone away and they've proven them wrong. But, but listen, we have, millions of, we have millions of all different kinds of creatures, but we don't have any transitional fossils. What do we have? Every fossil is a transitional fossil. That's, now wait a minute now, hold on, hold on, hold on. Do you, uh, do you understand, do you understand philosophically, I understand your, your what do you go to school for? I'm a um, Okay, now, I, I was thinking of the geologist who was here earlier. But um, yeah, you understand that's a, that's a, that's a, a fallacy you just committed right there. Okay, what, what's the fallacy of that? You begged the question. Okay, well then. Right. You, you you assumed your position to prove your position. Okay, in chapter one of becoming human. You, you can't say every fossil is a transitional fossil. You can't prove it like that. I can say every fossil is not a transitional fossil, and that wouldn't prove it to you, would it? Like, I mean, I, I can't, I, I guess we could go through, like, the whale chain of, like, uh, like, the evolutionary chain of each specific fossil we have, but, like, I don't think that's going to say anything to you. Uh, well, because here, here's the problem. Here's the problem. You're looking at the evidence through your evolutionary goggles. I'm looking at them through my biblical goggles. Okay, so every piece of evidence I look at, I look at it in light of God's word. So, so when I look at evidence, if it, if you tell me something that contradicts God's word, of course I'm not going to receive it because God's word is absolute and authoritative. So you're assuming God's word. No, I'm not assuming it. I know it. Okay. Yeah. Yes, my presupposition is in the beginning God. Okay. Well, Yours is not. Mine is just, I don't, I try not to assume. But, okay, but here's the problem. You, you do have assumptions, whether you want to admit it or not. We all do. Right. Okay. And whenever they're pointed out to me, I try and get rid of them immediately. Because well, I think that's the wrong way to approach them. Actually, that's not the way it works. We all, we all have assumptions. You have to have them. We all have. In fact, you have to make the bare minimum number of assumptions. So but you, you have to have some, right? Number of things. Okay, so what's, do you assume that your five senses work properly? Do you want to help me find things? Properly would be like, 
like kind of a subjective term, but yeah, I guess so. Well, they're trustworthy. I mean, you have to get glasses if your eyes go bad. You might have to get a hearing aid eventually. That's the only way I can take in information. Maybe if you eat a hot pizza too quick, you might burn your taste buds. You can't taste things for a while. I mean, but we're talking about at full function, they're working properly. Yeah, generally, yeah. Okay, so, how do you know but, 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 but how do you know that? Gatherers of South Africa. I mean, I, I assume it. Okay. Okay. That, so that's an assumption. But but my my question for you is, who has the proper conditions to justify that assumption? If we believe in the beginning nothing, and then an explosion, and then billions of years later we have you and me, that's not any kind of foundation for trusting in your senses. A foundation for trusting your senses is that an intelligent being created everything we see. Who's even more, infinitely more intelligent than you or me? I don't think either of those are solid foundations for believing in your senses. We just kind of have to believe in our senses. No, no, no. It's the only way we can learn things. No, we don't have to. You choose to because you you know. It works though. I, I choose to believe in my senses. No, wait. That you, you just begged the question again. You said it works, but how do you know it works? Because when I walk towards you, I'm gonna. Because you're using your five senses. So that's begging the question. Just because something like is provably like works consistently, and then I believe it. But you know it works because of what? Because of my experience. With my because of your five senses. So, so, so you're proving your five senses by your five senses, which is circular reasoning. You're begging the question. It is. So, as I was saying, the only proper condition for reality being what you say it is, is in the beginning God, because then your five senses are proper working, they're reliable, they're trusted, because a God, intelligent being, hold on, hold on, let me, just let me finish and you can re rebut back. In the beginning, God is the only proper foundation for saying, okay, my five senses are working properly, I can trust what I see, touch, taste, smell, and hear, I can engage in science, which requires my senses working properly, uh, and I, I can believe that um, there's order in the universe, and I look for order, which, re which re is required to make scientific laws and be able to assume even more things. Like we assume gravity, right? Yeah. That's something we can prove. Uh, yeah. We actually did prove it. No, 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 you, you can prove it right now. But you can't prove it's going to be a constant and it has always been a constant. And you can't prove it's not going to... You can't prove it's going to change tomorrow. So, so it's, 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 you make it a law, but really, if evolution is true, there's no orderly, intelligent being called God behind it. It could change tomorrow for all we know. What do you mean? Like, I don't, what do you mean evolution could change tomorrow? I didn't say evolution, I said the, the law of gravity oh. could change tomorrow oh. if, if it's not for so, a God, intelligent being, sustaining it well, and keeping so, the way it is. Even to call it a law is assuming there's order in the universe. I mean, order is a sticky term though, because like, under my understanding of like the most recent scientific studies, um, like natural laws, like gravity, and like the way, you know, the expansion of the universe, stuff like that, um, they, they may be like necessary to this universe, that like the way we observe it, it couldn't have existed if it hadn't had the way it is. Yeah, I think it's. I, 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 yeah, I, I feel you. I, I think it's uh, impossible to have the results we have if the cause is in the beginning nothing. Nothing doesn't produce something. Nothing produces nothing. You don't get. You don't get everything from nothing. You don't even get something from nothing. Then what was there? Oh, we don't know. Well, we could, well, there's a variety of different... No, but give me an example of what would be there, though. I mean, uh, really Besides God. There's always a suggestion of, like, multiverse theory and stuff like that. What was there before them? I mean... Maybe that question doesn't even make sense. No, it does make sense because... No, well, that's your assumption. Uh, time is simply a measurement of succession of events. That's all it is. Okay, so... So, there, so you're assuming there has always been a succession of events? Is that what you're saying? No. Okay, so the, then there is a beginning then. Uh, a beginning to this universe is... No, a beginning period. I don't know. I mean, I don't know of, I don't know of any evolutionary scientist who believes that the universe has no beginning. I don't, I don't they all believe it has beginning. I, def I definitely know. Like, the universe itself definitely began at the Big Bang. That's what you say. That's, that's what I, I believe there was a Big Bang in the beginning. It was God saying, let there be light. That was the Big Bang. How, how old is the world? How old is the Earth? 
under 6,000 years old. Okay. Yeah. Like Hold on a second. Let me deal with him. I'll get back to you, though. Okay. No problem. So you just throw out like all the historical writings from longer than six thousand years ago? Do you well, just ignore them? No, I don't ignore anything. Uh, when it comes to dating methods, what well, what dating methods are being used to determine that a writing is over six thousand years old? I mean, there's all kinds of stuff. Like what? I mean, um, the, the one that I find most compelling would be. Um, I suppose like linking. Uh, like, Records of like weather patterns that humans have like taken over time, uh -huh. linking them with like dendrochronology, like the, with the trees and stuff, uh -huh. and then showing that like in this year these people were writing about like this famine, which is proven by the trees and like the evidence that we can that we can uh, take from the trees, and then we can like uh, work our way backwards. And we know like we have trees living now that are older than six thousand years. No, we don't. No, no. The oldest tree, oldest tree that I'm aware of, I think, is in New Zealand or Australia, and it's like around 4,500 years old, which actually would date back to right after the flood. Yeah. So, but when it comes to dating methods, most of them are flawed. I mean, I, I've looked into carbon-14 dating, radioisotope dating, um, and and when it comes to the when it comes to the writing when it comes to the writing of men, I'll get that in a second. When it comes to the writings of men and dating stuff, men are flawed. Men can make mistakes, and, and and even like even like dating trees. I mean, even like the, they're dating. Like you cut a tree down, you see the rings in it. Even that's been proven to be flawed. Doesn't doesn't date them properly all the time. So, but when it comes to carbon fourteen dating, there's lots of assumptions made. One that we know how much carbon fourteen was in it to start out with. Number two that the release of carbon fourteen has stayed continuous, the amount of release over the years. We don't know either of those two things. No, we don't. No, what you know is what it is now. You don't know how much carbon-14 started out in that creature, and you don't know if the release every year is the same as it is now. You're basing it upon now, and we don't know that. Catastrophes around the world change things in the world. And there was a catastrophe about... Nuclear fission rates, like the breakdown, like half-life rates, would they? I can't see a good reason for that. I mean, I may even be willing to give you the... We don't know how much carbon 14 originally, but I definitely can't give you the change in half life rate. So you do know it's, it hasn't changed. You, you the rate. I don't know that, but it, it okay. That's my point. So you so you're assuming that you're assuming the rate's the same, and you're assuming you know how much started out with. Therefore, you assume the date. So it's a flawed dating method. So I mean, these are the things that evolutionists rely upon for. Uh, how old the world is supposedly but what they do is they they'll assume the world is millions of years old first then they'll date and say it's released over this period of time and therefore we know how old it is that's backwards that's begging the question no i'm not i've studied it quite a bit well you can say it all you want but i've studied it quite a bit it's been a couple of years since i looked at it what sources did you look at what sources did you look at? That's not an answer to it. That's not what I asked. Well, that, well I'm, I'm, by asking that question, I'm proving a point okay. that it doesn't matter what my sources are. I don't claim to be expert on it either. I know you're not, so why are you discussing it? Why aren't you talking to experts about it? Well, hold on a second. I was asked a question, and I answered it. I don't have to be an expert or something to answer the question on it. My question is, what sources did you look at? And my question in rebuttal to that, to prove to you it means nothing, is what are your sources? I'm not dodging. I'm asking. I'm answering the question with because you're not going to care about my sources. Well, Jesus Christ answered questions to questions all the time. So I'm walking in His footsteps when I answer questions to questions. What did you say? Well, he's the god of the whole universe. So yes, he knows about carbon dating. Well, he doesn't have to say anything about it. He said a lot in his word. I never said my source was Jesus. Well, my sources don't matter to you because they're creationist sources. That's why they don't matter to you. That's why it's irrelevant for me to tell you what my sources are. Deal with the, I just told you creationists are my sources. And of course, you you just that, that's exactly why I didn't mention it for because you just oh you just push it aside because it's a creationist. Well, who, what are your sources? The bi biology books here at this college? I'm not making any claims about carbon dating at the moment. I'm asking them, like, are your sources people who are relevant experts in what Of course they are. are. Yes, geologists who have PhDs. What are their names? You know, I can't remember off the top of my head. Okay. What are your sources? 
<laughs> what are your sources? Our John Ato publication day, uh, 1989. Uh, then Sydney Shivers uh, publication day, 2000. Yep. John Waller publication date, 1990. Oh, yeah. That I mean, you're, you're, all you're doing is name dropping. You, I mean, that, that's kind of like an ad populum argument that you think that because a lot of people say a certain thing, it makes it true. It doesn't make it true. No, no, ad populum is not. Well, what if experts disagree? Who's right and who's wrong? The majority? But the ones oh. Be because in history, if you look at the history of science, a lot of times the minority was right. No, not always. Not always. No, in fact, in fact, according to scriptures, according to scriptures, the minority is right. According to scriptures, the minority is right, not the majority. Because Jesus Christ said that few went to the kingdom of God and many will grow on a broad path to destruction. How about God's word? How about Bible? How about God's word? Does God's word determine your relationship? Why do I think the Bible is God's word? Well, I mean, I've read it for myself. I've studied it out for myself. I think it's reliable and trustworthy. I think it proves to be God's word through the prophecies in it. Through the men of God who testified to Jesus' life, through Jesus Christ's death, burial, and resurrection, all the miracles, signs, and wonders he did. I mean, these, these, not, these may not be convincing to you, but I'm not trying to convince you the Bible is God's word. I'm, I don't seek to do that. I know it's God's word. I don't have to convince you about that. My job is to preach it to you. And you can choose to reject it and go to hell, or you can choose to receive it and become one of God's children. It's your choice, man. I mean, but I'm not here to convince you that Bible is God's word. I mean, even to do that, I would have to assume a neutral position, which I would never do. Neutrality is a myth. You're not neutral. I'm not neutral. We, we talked about that a second ago. You say you try not to have assumptions, but you're not neutral. The Bible says you're against God because you love your sin. Do you love your sin? So you do love some sins. That's my point. That's what the Bible says. You love sin. Therefore, you don't like God. You hate God. I hate sin. I love God. So we come from different perspectives here. Well, that's actually that's actually just wool and linen. I don't have any wool or linen. I'm not, I am following the Bible. I'm not wearing wool and linen put together. You're you're ignorant of the scriptures, man. No, I'm not. Prove it. Yep. That's that's. O only someone who doesn't understand what love is would call this hate. Yep. What is love? What is love? Sodomy? Well, how come you're not loving me? How come you're not loving me? No, you're not supporting me right now. You're against me. You know, it amazes me how hypocritical and blind people can be. They'll say that what I do is not loving because I'm not supporting you in your abominations. But when they don't support me in what I'm doing, they're loving still. Does anyone else not see the blindness there? The hypocrisy there? But of course, let's, let's not care about that unless a preacher commits some kind of hypocritical thing. Then it matters. When a general person does hypocritical things day in and day out and is a walking contradiction, no big deal. Let them slide. When a preacher judges, that's wrong. But when a sinner judges, oh, let's cheer for them. He judged the preacher. Well, God's going to judge you. And most of you are just not ready. You're not ready for God to judge your thoughts, your words, and your deeds. What do you do? God loves us unconditionally. The Bible doesn't say that. No matter what, we always forgive us unconditionally. The Bible doesn't say that. The Bible says that God has this kind of unconditional love for you. That he sent his son to die for you. That's his un You don't deserve that. I don't deserve that. But he sent his son to die for you. And that's unconditional love towards you. But as far as saving you from your sins, forgiving of your sins, there's conditions to that. You have to repent. But he can forgive us for it. He can, but it's not automatic. You have to repent, you have to believe, you have to follow. If you don't repent of your sins, turn from them, 
Trust in Jesus Christ who died from the cross. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. No, 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 no. You stop. If you don't repent of your sins, trust in Jesus Christ and follow him, then you will end up in hell. No, I'm not going to stop talking. We've gone through this judging thing five or six times now. It's not okay. It's not wrong to judge people. I am helping you. No, you're not. You're saying you're So there's a judge in a courtroom. Does a judge in a courtroom help criminals? No. You're he doesn't? You, what, Does a judge help criminals? Does a jury help criminals? Does a police officer help criminals? Yes, they do. By judging them, by giving them punishments. Stupid sign means nothing. The hey, sign. keep your hands off my sign, Sinner. Keep your hands off my sign, Sinner. That's the Christian right there. That's the loving guy. I am. Example I'm of love. Judging. Example of love because as long as you're not judging anyone else except for me, I'm not you're judging. loving. You just did. Because you are doing this. Oh, I am. You are judging me. Then you are judging me. Yes, but you're. Oh, so you're not loving either. Huh? So you're not loving either. No, I just disapprove of Oh, okay. So you're telling me to be loving, telling me to judge, but you're judging and being unloving according to your definition of love. Can I ask a question? You're a walking contradiction, young man. God's convicting you of your sins. Forsake your sins. Give them up. If you just wait patient, I'll get to you. I don't have to. I don't have to answer questions. I'm going to preach the word of God. And so, when the Bible says that uh, is against certain kinds of judging, it's against hypocritical judgment, not against uh, judging in general or righteous judgment. God is for righteous judgment. God will judge you on judgment day. Okay. And the Bible says a spiritual man, that's a Christian, judges all things, and he himself is rightly judged by no man. So yes, there's nothing wrong with judging, nothing wrong with telling people they're wrong, if they are. Nothing wrong with telling people they're going to hell if they are. That's a big difference. Nothing, you, know, you know, if I came out here and told you all good stuff about yourself, you wouldn't be complaining. It would still be judging you. Why don't you tell us good stuff about Jesus like there is? I have told you. You, you know, I've said a lot of stuff about Jesus today. And me sitting here and preaching his word is... Well, then back up then. Me... Your Me preaching God's word is doing good things for Jesus Christ. Preaching God's word and correcting others is totally different than judging them. Maybe you should preach honestly, some love and grace and forgiveness. Honestly, God says, instead of and actually, I will give you a Bible verse. I don't, you know what? Here's Revelation 3.19. Here's some love for you from Jesus. Revelation 3.19, Jesus Christ said, As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore, be zealous and repent. John 8, be zealous and repent. John Don't be apathetic and repent. He that is without be sin among zealous you, let him cast and repent. Sin as, as on her. So until, so he just said, let him who is without sin cast the first stone. You have sinned, you cannot cast the stone. Okay, Bible story time. John chapter eight. Open up the John chapter eight, which you just quoted from. Right. Let's John learn. Seven. Let's learn what it's actually saying there. In John chapter eight, right. Jesus Christ has a woman caught in adultery, Who brought her thrown Who her? thrown at her feet by religious leaders yes. of the Jewish people. Okay. And I know the and, yes. and I the, know the story. And the law of Moses, I'm a Christian. which is given to Moses by God, right. commands them to stone adulterers and adulteresses. Exactly. That's and so exactly. they were doing nothing wrong by desiring to obey God's law given to them by Moses. Now do you think when God said in Deuteronomy and Leviticus to stone certain people for certain sins, he was talking about metaphorical word stones? No, physically stones. That's yeah. right, physical stones. So in John chapter 8, verse 7, Jesus is saying to the hypocrites, he without sin cast the first literal physical stone to kill the adulterous woman. Okay, but now tell me, how, are you gonna how many stones do you see in my hand? The Are there any stones in my hand? So it doesn't apply to me. Okay, no. And then Jesus Christ goes on to say in John chapter 8, the, the men walk away one by one because they realize they're hypocrites. They walk away one by one. And then Jesus Christ says, where are your accusers? He says, they're gone. He says, hold on, neither do I accuse you, but go and sin no more. And that's the very message I have for you today. Go and sin 
But no more. Well, if that were true, which it isn't, why? if that were true, then why would Jesus say, go and sin no more? Was Jesus joking around? Was he just joshing? Did he really mean to say, go and sin some more? Did he really mean to say, hey, you can't stop sinning, I'm just joking, guys. No, he meant what he said and said what he meant. He said, go and sin no more, and he meant it. He commands you to go and sin no more. Now, in Matthew 5, 48, Jesus Christ said to a bunch of sinners in the Sermon on the Mount, he said, be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. Now, when Jesus Christ said to a bunch of sinners, be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect, did he mean A, go back and erase all the sin you committed, B, don't sin anymore, or C, hey, I'm just joking, nobody can be perfect. He meant B. He didn't mean A. And I'm not saying when I'm living a holy life, I've never sinned. I'm saying I'm living holy right now, and I plan to do that the rest of my days. I'm not even saying, I'm not even saying, I'm not even saying to my own shame that I haven't sinned since becoming a Christian. I should be able to say that, but I can't. that you are any less of a Christian. The Bible says your sins separate you from God. But it does not mean that you are not still a good Christian. John 17, 3, Jesus Christ said, this is eternal life. Knowing God the Father and the one he has sent. Okay, you can still know God and so when you saved. Well, that's what the Bible says. First John what? two. First <laughs> John two and you are no longer a good Christian. First John of course not. No first John two, three through four says this. Jesus Christ was the only sin. Now but you just you just misrepresented me again. I never said I've never sinned. I'm saying I'm not sinning now. I'm not saying what that's you said or not. I'm I didn't sin. say anyone else has gone their whole life without sinning. Never said that. I didn't even say that by myself. I, people who've been here since the beginning heard me say that I've done a lot of these things on here. And 19 years ago... Right! I'm not sitting presently. You don't think that you don't sin in some form daily? No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. No. I live a holy life. I obey God. Now, if I were to sin, now I'm in danger again. No, I need to repent again. I need to confess my sins to God again and get forgiveness again if I were to sin. But I'm not assuming that's going to happen again. That's an ungodly mindset. I'm going to assume that I'm going to live holy. That's what God commands me to do. The thing is, we all want to live holy and That's not true. That's not true. In fact, the Bible says the exact opposite. That most people don't want to live holy. Most people want to be sinful. Most people want to be have sex outside of marriage. They want to get drunk. They want to look at pornography. They want to have a filthy mouth. They want to contradict God's word. That's what most people are like according to the, God's word. So if you're contradicting God's word, I'm going to believe God's word over you. So yeah, we were supposed to live holy. I'm living holy now. I hope, by the grace of God, I never sin again. I hope that by the grace of God, I never sin again. Sure, but but the Bible says the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to every man, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present age. So grace teaches me not to sin, but to live holy. But teaches me not to sin, but to live a holy life. And so if you claim to have the grace of God, but it's not teaching you live holy right now, then you don't have the grace of God that brings salvation according to the scriptures. So the Bible says. In Romans 6.14 it says, Sin shall not have dominion over you, for you're not under law, but under grace. So being under grace means that sin does not have control, dominion, sovereignty over you. You have control over it. You've forsaken it. You're living, I'm talking to her, you're being rude. I, I, I'm talking to her. You're being rude. Well, she, that's what she calls herself. Well, she needs to repent. Well, let me tell you about myself. I'm a transgender woman, and I've had a sex change for over 20 years. I'm a Christian. No, you're not. I've given my life to the Lord. No, you're not. Over Impossible. Well, let me tell you something. He brought me out of drug addiction 15 years ago. I came home with full-blown AIDS, dying. I gave my life to the Lord. He gave me new life. He reunited me with my family. I have a great church that I go to. They, have, they accept me. I was baptized in that church. 
I try to live a good and holy life. I try to live a good and holy life. What church is that? Free Methodist Church. That go well, the Free Methodist Church is apostate for the most part. What? But doesn't that doesn't surprise me. In America, most of the church, unfortunately, is apost apostate. You got the Episcopalian church going to sodomite parades. You got the Baptists who are I mean, they're constantly going downhill. The Methodists have really gone away. They have sodomites for pastors, women for pastors. I'm not, I'm, I'm not, I'm living in sin. Well, yes, what you did to yourself was sinful. Okay, so in your mind, how do I fix that? For Jesus. Go back and change it. Really? I have a friend who did the same thing. So, I have a friend, listen, hold on. I have a friend that's similar to your situation. If you listen for a second, okay? Then you can say what you want to say, okay? There's a friend of mine who's in Australia. Okay, he was a, a post-op. He had things chopped off, things put on. Oh, don't use that kind of language. Things put on. He lived as a woman, had boyfriends and everything they didn't even know for like 20, 30 years. Okay, hold on. And then he became a Christian. He read the Bible. He repented. And he said, "Lord, what do you want me to do?" And he reversed it all. You can't reverse it all. Oh yes, you. Well, no. Well, not all of it, obviously. My, yeah. My love, my love. My mind, she kissed me warm. A gay I'm song. Female. No, you're not. Song. You're you're deceiving yourself. I am not. This you're deceiving a yourself. Song. You're deceiving yourself. About homosexual. You're not. You're not a female. You're a male. God I'm made you a male. Trans female. You are. No, you're not. Her you're deceived. Female. You're deluded. I don't know her That's you're deluded. But here's what I know. You're deceived. Oh, no. You're a man. Be a man. Here's what. She I know. is a woman. No. She's a man who chained herself into a woman. Here's, what, here's what I know. No, she's not. She's whatever God makes her to be. And God made her to a man. You were born a man. You to be a man. I was a IV drug meth addict. Seven years, God set me free. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to be free. I was in that because I was lost in it. He appeared to me, not in physical, but in showing me love and sending me to come back to my family where they showed me love. And he set me free from that, along with all the other stuff that I had taken on with that. I had to prostitute to get the shit. I had to prostitute. I had to sell whatever. He brought me out of that, the mentality, all of it. He gave me my self-worth back. Did he make me feel straight? No, because I never felt straight. I never felt what you would call heterosexual. I have no concept of that. All I know is from the time that I was old enough to know the difference between me and my sister, I knew that I felt like I was living in the wrong body. And praying that he would take that away from me, I come out of a very strict Southern Baptist home. Praying that he would take that away from me so that I could be married and have children like everyone else. It didn't happen. It didn't happen. But what did happen was I come home. He remakes me, he gives me a new heart and a new mind. Not a mind for drug addiction, not a mind for uh, the way that I lived before. Okay, now you've spoken some truth. I mean, I'm, I'm, let's, let's I, I'm, I'm hold on, hold on. Now, blown now, AIDS. Okay, now you, you've, I mean, maybe God has changed you to some degree. Hold on. So, but you haven't gone all the way. Changed? Yeah. You, this guy's so but, but what, here's, what do you mean going all the way? You haven't repented completely. You haven't repented of what you did to yourself. When this body breaks down and goes into the ground and becomes nothing, it is my soul that Christ is in. And, and another thing is that you, you were talking some truth for a while, but then you went straight to feelings. Feelings, 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 feelings. Listen, you can deceive yourself. You, 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 don't, you don't live by feelings, you live by truth. I spent the first part of my life until I was 18 years old pretending to be what my father and my mother and my church What's that? wanted me to be. What's that? A good Christian boy. Well, you're, that's what you're supposed to be. But I was Don't fraud. pretend. Don't pretend. Actually be it. Well, that's your fault. Not their fault. That's your fault that you're a fraud. It's not their fault either. Well, I, their that's fault what I said. It's not their fault. It's your fault. Not their fault. It's your no fault. Listen, fault. if if you're Christian, it is your fault no. if you're a fraud. No. Yes. If someone's a hypocrite, it's their fault. It's no Period. one's fault. I hold no one accountable for the way that I identify myself. You hold yourself accountable. 
What you're doing is you're shifting blame from yourself where it belongs no to God. There's God no God made me a man, but he made a mistake. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. So then why did you change things? Nobody here would Then why did you change things? My brother was born with cerebral palsy. Different, different. Cerebral palsy is not a sin. What you did is a sin. Wait a minute. What's the difference? Something happened before... So God did do it? No. Oh, so God didn't do it. In the fallen world. Uh-huh. People are born with disabilities. They're born with things that happen. You weren't born with a disability. I didn't say that I was born with a disability. So why are you comparing it to that? Because you're saying... You're comparing apples and oranges. You're, no. You're saying that uh -huh. I said God made a mistake. I'm saying I never said those words. So you have to fix what God did. Oh. Well, did, did, did God knit you together in your mother's womb? Oh, my God. Did, did God what? Knit you together in your mother's womb, like the Bible says. Did he knit my brother together in my mother's Sure did. Womb? Sure did. So, He's exactly the way he wanted him to be. So he wanted my brother to be folded up in cerebral palsy. Yeah, what's wrong with that? How's that make you feel? What's wrong with that? Why is that crazy? Why can't God do that? Is it a sin for God to do that? Is it, okay. Is it a sin for God to do that? You're talking about sin. Right. It seems like you're talking about biology. It seems like you're claiming that that was wrong for it to happen if God did it. I never said it was wrong, and I never said I blamed him, and I never said it was a mistake. So did God do it? I'm talking about biology. Did God do it? So you want to answer simple questions. I don't know how to answer what you're asking. Because it contradicts what you believe. That's the problem. It exposes what you believe. You were not born a female. God did not intend for you to be a female. God intended for you to be a male. And if you if we don't be the best person that I could be. Which is being a male. Really? Yeah, really. So what would be the difference if I had been born intersex? You weren't born intersex. You were born male. And you changed what God made you to be. But what if I was born intersex? And became a sinner as a result of it. Became a what? A sinner as a result of it. And you haven't repented of that sin still. You're still deceiving yourself and deluding yourself into believing that you are a man trapped in a woman's body. Okay. Or a woman trapped in a man's body. I don't know how to be a man. Well, God's working, teacher. I'll remind really? you, sir, that gender and sex are two entirely okay. distinct things. Well, so says apostasy. So says the world. So says a liberal media. Well, science can't tell you what you feel and why you feel it. Really? They can tell you what. what they can tell you what's going on in your brain when you feel a certain way. They can definitely measure certain areas of the brain. Not why. Not why you feel that way. They can measure what is. What is the result of you feeling that way? Not why. Why you feel that way? Because you were a sinner. You chose to feel that way. So as a child, some demonic force came in and convinced Could have been, but as a child, you were not sexual. Children no, aren't sexual. I wasn't sexual. I was just a little girl who wanted to grow up and fall in love like everyone else. No. No, you weren't a little girl, you were a little boy. Who liked to read little girls' books. Well, that was your choice to do that. Yeah, I... I, I who I am. I wouldn't doubt there was demonic influence involved. Wouldn't surprise me. Some oh demon my in my house. Well, there's demonic demons all over the place. You don't believe that? You claim to be a Christian and you don't believe that? Around every rock and corner. Well, I didn't say they were. But they can't influence children? Can't can out. Can demons influence children? Can demons influence children? Yeah. Is that like the same as can they possess children? I think that the Bible says that a, a Christian cannot be possessed. Not a Christian, a child. A child. I didn't say they could. I didn't say that. Okay, so then why did Jesus drive demons out of a little boy in the scriptures if a child can't be possessed? Of course demons can influence children. And I would suppose that's what happened to you. I'm not telling you that, Clay. Like, so what happened when I got saved at 14? Well, what happened when I went back and gave my life to the Lord at 30 years old? You deceived yourself. I've got to go ahead and leave you alone. Well, it's up to you. You're not following the truth. I guess truth is relative. No, it's not relative, sir. Truth is not relative. Yeah. Really? Truth is not relative. No. Now you're just being purposefully mean. Now see, no, I'm not. No, hold on. Wait. I'm not being purposefully mean. Do you mean. believe that, that verbally 
being disrespectful to someone is very Christian. Not disrespectful at all. No. Oh it's what you were made, what I'm going to call you by. Call me she until I opened my mouth and told you. Because I was ignorant of the truth, but now I know the truth. Were you? Now I know the truth. You saw me as Things God aren't God. always as they seem. You, you saw me as Can't judge a book by its cover. Person. You gave me the respect that, that I still see you as a person, but I see you as a sinner who's confused. You said, oh sir, You're deluded. Purpose. You need Jesus Christ to transform you. Christ. No, you don't. I don't need your brand of hatred. Oh, no, There's no hatred involved here. So because I call you by your birth gender, I'm hateful and disrespectful. And because you've changed yourself and disrespected what God made you as, you're being respectful and I'm being disrespectful? Yes. You see how backwards you are? No. Well, unto those who call evil good and good evil. Put I darkness for light and light, light for darkness. Down. No, it's not me. I'm right side up. You're upside down. You're the one who chopped off body parts and changed yourself to a different gender. I didn't do that. You did that. If there was something and out of love for you, I tell you the truth about Why yourself. Why don't I have the same type of animosity for you that you have for this world? I don't have animosity towards anybody. Really? I have rebuke towards you to wake you up. To get you to come out of your sins. How much more awake could I be? Well, I've, I've explained to you several times. I can tell you again. Stop, go back to being a male. That's how. Stop trying to act like you're a woman when you're a man. We just choose this life. It's just so easy. Do you think I would just choose this life? It's so easy for me? I chose it, didn't I? It's easy for me? You chose it. Of course you chose it. There were influences involved, but of course, who chose it for you? God chose it for you? If there was a choice, my choice was to stop pretending and be myself. That was the only choice. Your choice is to be the sinner you, you wanted to be. Attracted to women, you have no idea what it's Nothing like. to do with attraction. I can be tempted to do things I don't want to do and then do it. Hey, doesn't matter how many pats on the back you get, it's not going to change the facts. Doesn't matter how many pats on the back you get, not going to change the facts. I'll give you this. To this day, my dad, my dad still prays for me because it's people like you who makes him think that I'm going to hell. Though I go to church. No, the Bible makes him think you're going to hell, which is so God's you, word. So you believe that you God seek to change God's word to fit your own so lifestyle. You feel like if I wash my face, cut my hair, and dress like a man, that's going to accept me. You need to be a man. You're a man. Be a man. Tell me. Would you like to tell me how I'm going to be a man? Yep. <laughs> yep. You can chop your breast off. Go back to being a man. Stop dressing like a woman. Stop acting like a woman. Stop trying to deceive people that you are a woman because you are a man. I deceive no one and I live in You are deceived. You deceive yourself. I have to live in my truth. No, you, you don't. I never had a boyfriend that did not know that I was a trans woman. That makes it good. Makes it okay, right? Anybody. That makes it okay, right? Even live in deception. You deceive yourself. I do not. You're under strong delusion. I'm under You'll probably end up taking the mark of the oh, beast in the end. Oh my god! Are you serious? I am serious. If you're so deluded, you think you can be a woman when you are made a man, a man by God. It's no telling what you believe you know next. How disgusting that makes you sound as a, as a Christian. Well, a lesbian would say that, yeah. Yes, so, exactly, as so, a lesbian. Yes, so you I expect you to think that about me. Into your own idea. How much knowledge we have. Not about an idea. It's about God's word. That I would take the mark of the beast. It's about God's word. Yeah, you're not you're not a lover of the truth. Yes, because you're living in deception, you're living in delusion. To the point where you think some way that you can be a woman when you are made by God a man. Can I just correct you? I don't believe that I am a genetic woman. I am a trans woman. I realize the truth. But you're deceived. My truth may not look there you go. There you go. Your truth. Not God's truth. You made it up for yourself. You're an idolater. Instead of conforming yourself to God's image, you're trying to conform God to your image. Instead of conforming yourself to God's image, you're trying to conform God to your image. So God will accept whatever you are, whatever you want to do. You all do the same. I mean, mo most sinners do this. They say, well, God's okay with my fornication. God's okay with my porn watching. God will give my filthy mouth. God's okay with me chopping up body parts and becoming a different gender. God's okay with me sleeping with the same gender. No, God's not okay with any of those things. God's not okay with any of those things. Did you hear what I just said? No, I don't even care to know. Well, I'm gonna tell you anyway. Nothing was chopped off. It was turned inside out, so I still have it. 
Mm -hmm. so you can over. All the more easy to go back to where you're supposed to be. All the more easy to go back to the way you're supposed to be. The way I was supposed to be. A male. The child. A male. Like they were in a body feelings, 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 body feelings. Body feelings are no. Feelings are irrelevant. This body Truth is, is what matters. Fall into wow. the ground. It's my. And then you'll go to hell. Interested. And then you'll go to hell. It was so well, we'll wrong. see who sees who. We have yeah, I'm gonna look across and see. I would say I told you. Actually, I warned you. My hands are free of your blood. Hell is below, not across. Hades, Luke 16. Read it. Rich man and Lazarus, Luke 16. I'm just gonna pray for you. God doesn't even hear your prayers. You think God doesn't hear my prayers? Doesn't pay attention to your prayers. Are you kidding me? But the Bible says. To every prayer. Doesn't pay attention to your prayers. Yes, He does. God doesn't pay attention to your prayers. Are you kidding me right now? So when I was. When I was at my lowest, sick with AIDS, with AIDS and dying, shouldn't that have been a good enough punishment me for that right there? But so you're telling me that prayer? because she loves God and she is happy that God's just going to stop listening to her prayers and stop, and stop caring. No, that's not what I said. You did. You said you did. God doesn't, doesn't care about prayers. your prayers. No, I didn't say that. And he doesn't he hear them. Doesn't you did. You said God won't hear your prayers. Okay. God doesn't pay attention. Isaiah, yeah, Isaiah 66, 18 says, If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear. But Jesus had not told If I regard iniquity in the price. God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. You're regarding iniquity in your heart. He's not going to hear your prayers. Believe, but that's Old Testament. Do you believe the Bible? I believe that Jesus came and died on the cross for our sins. That he looked out from eternity and saw that we were a sinful people. That we needed him. He was the perfect sacrifice. And he came from eternity. He died on the cross. He rose the third day. And he said, whosoever believeth in me shall not perish. But but you're going to miss heaven by 18 inches. Because you have it all in your head, but you don't have it in your heart. Isaiah 59 verses 1 and 2. Tell anyone what they have Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened what they have that it cannot save, heart. nor Who his ear heavy that it cannot hear, but your iniquities because have separated you head, from God, and your sins heart. have hidden because his face from you, so that he will God. not God. hear. God, you Isaiah 59, 1 through 2, the word of God. The word because of God. The relationship with God is between Isaiah 59, 1 through 2. Not you, the word of God. God. Me and God. Behold, the Lord's God. hand is not shortened that it cannot it save, what you believe, nor his ear matters. heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated you from your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you, so that he will not hear. Where? I want to see it. Go get your own Bible. Isaiah 59, 1 through 2. You can get your Bible out and read yourself. So we have two different scriptures I just read to you that prove what I said. You don't believe the Bible. That's the problem. What was the verse? You, uh, Isaiah 59, 1 through 2. And, so, and Psalm 66, 18. You do understand that your interpretation of So, if you regard iniquity in your heart, the Lord will not hear. That's not true. If you are sinning, God you have separated from God. You, and God will always be willing You're, to accept you. If you are you, sinning, you are separated from God. Because God His is hand is not too God. heavy that he cannot save. He is an His ears are not too God. heavy that he cannot he hear. But your iniquities have separated you from God so that he will not hear. He will. And he will forgive you. You disagree with God's word. You disagree with God's word. Your problem with God, not with me. God's yeah, you do. I just read to you. What's that? No denomination. Just a Christian. Bible believing, Bible obeying, born again Christian. That's it. What does that matter? You don't. Do you go to church? Because you just insulted pretty much every church earlier. I haven't insulted anybody. I told you the truth. It's not insulting to tell you the truth. If you receive it as an insult, that's your fault. Hey, listen. When Jesus Christ uh, rebuked the Pharisees. His disciples said, you don't know you offended them? He said, leave them alone. They're blind leaders of the blind. Okay, look, That's exactly what these most Methodist churches and Episcopal churches and Presbyterian churches and Baptist churches these days, they're blind leaders of the blind. 
by well over a thousand years. No, my church, my church that I, I follow and believe in is the same church that the early church fathers were part of. They were the disciples, listen, they were disciples of the disciples. People like Polycarp, Ignatius, Irenaeus, Justin Martyr. Uh, these people, Clement of Rome, these are the people whose faith I follow as well as the apostles themselves. Now the Roman Catholic Church, the Roman Catholic Church is the apostasy that happened around the 5th, 6th century. So no, I don't follow the Pope. He's not a representation of Christ on the earth. Uh, I don't think, I don't think communion, I don't think communion be, literally becomes the blood and body of Jesus. I don't think I need to go to a confession booth and confess to some man to get my sins forgiven. I don't believe I need to serve out a penance to get my sins forgiven. Those are all corruptions of the scripture. Those are all corruptions of the scripture. Well, I could sin, and if I did, I wouldn't do those things. I'd forsake and repent to God. I confess my sins to God. Every sin. Every sin. Well, that and every other sin. I don't have thought sins. I don't lust. I don't lust. No, I don't lust. That's not what he said. But he said, he said, if you lust after a person in your heart, then you commit adultery in your heart. I don't care. Cover my face all you want. I don't care if they see my face. The drag show Christian. The drag show Christian, right? Cheer for her, world. Cheer for her. I am. Pat her on her back on the way to hell. Oh, yeah. I'll fucking cheer for her. Pat her on her back on the way to hell. The drag show Christian. Christianity. I'm not going to hell. Well, says who? You a liar. The fucking liar. Where? Exactly. Well, you're just a believer in God, not a follower of Jesus. God and Jesus are the same. Well, actually, there's three persons: one God, yeah, the God Trinity, the Trinity, and, yeah. and Jesus. So Jesus isn't the same as the Father. So you're wrong about that. No, I said Jesus Christ. Not just some ambiguous. For the life of me, why you won't leave the judging to him. Well, he is gonna have the judge. Okay. He will have final judgment. But he doesn't not the judge here. He will have final judgment, but he commands the judgment to him! You sure you want that? Yeah. I, yeah. I'd you you act, you act. I'd rather grab life by with young man. You act like you take comfort in God judging you. There's no comfort in that. You're a sinner. There's no comfort in God judging you if you're a sinner. You're gonna be thrown into hell, man. My judge. Listen, my judgment is lightweight compared to God's, man. It's nothing. I only judge what I see with my eyes and hear with my ears. God sees things and hears things I will never see and hear. No, it's not. Then God's a sinner. Then God's the biggest sinner in the world. Uh, yeah, uh, and that's the implication. Well, he created he's the damn world, so he can sin all his life. Well, he's not a sinner. He's holy, 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 which means you're wrong. No, I am holy. I am holy. Judging's not a sin. Says who? Says who? Says who? Well, listen, I, I know why you think judging's a sin. I know why you think judging is a sin. Because you're a sinner. Because you're a sinner and you hate judgment. You're a sinner and you hate judgment. That's why you think judging is a sin. You don't hate judgment. It's in the Bible, stupid. So says the potty mouth. Exactly. Why should anyone listen to anything you say about the Bible with your potty mouth? I think you'll find that cursing is actually a sign of intelligence. No, it's not. Yes, it is. a sign of immorality. Yes. sign of a wicked, depraved heart. Prove my point, sinner. You proved my point. I can sit here and I can say words like non-drum and intelligence, and I can say a whole bunch of words, and I can still tell you to fuck off. Because you're wicked. Because you're a wicked devil, that's why. I would like to know, uh, if God created the universe and the world, why would he create that shit on that sign?
But but listen, when you listen, when you're wearing a red hot chili pepper shirt, you don't really have room to talk. You really have room to talk. No, no, living for Jesus Christ makes me better. I have friends that are actually Really? I thought he was sending lots of people to hell and he's gonna judge everybody. He isn't? That's what he said he was gonna do. Why would he forgive us all and love us all? He doesn't forgive everybody. He doesn't forgive everybody. No, wait a minute now. Jesus Christ said that he's gonna send most people to hell. Matthew 7, 13 to 14. Bring out your smartphone and read it for yourself. No, I didn't say all. That's not what I said. I said most. And I never said he loves and forgives everybody. That's your position. Not what the Bible says either. Forgiveness is conditional upon your repentance. Yes, of course. You don't have to lie. You obviously don't like him. Fuck what they talking about. I got a question. What is your purpose? Preach the Bible. Okay. Mine's based upon truth. Yours based upon lies. I agree with that. You're a fucking liar. Huh? You're a liar. Says who? But my question. Well, I don't care. I don't care what you say. I got a question. Well, then walk away. Okay. Have you ever cut your hair? Have I ever cut my hair? I mean, yeah. No, it's not. No, the no, the Bible says. It's a shame for a man to have long hair, so you have to cut your hair. But you have long hair, so you're a hypocrite. I don't have long hair. What the fuck is this? It's a beard, man. It's hair on your head. It's, it's on your head. This is you are really deluded, man. You're probably... Are you a porn watcher? Yes, I watch porn. I knew it. I knew it, because your mind is really messed up, man. You're filling your mind with all that junk, all that perversion. There you go. I mean, you're proving my point even more. It says... They shall not make bald patches on their heads nor shave off their heads. Oh, hey, I cut my hair. Oh, condemn it yourself. It's not a sin to cut your hair. Yes, it is. It's not what it says. Why do you think Jesus' hair was long? His hair wasn't long. You dumb as fuck. Wait a minute, you got a picture of Jesus? Oh, yeah, picture of Jesus. They got a smartphone back there, you can take a selfie. There's no pictures of Jesus, there's drawings of Jesus. You got a picture of Jesus? Drawn hundreds of years later by the Roman Catholic Church. This stupid shit is right of what? Bible. God's Word. Was it his word exactly? No. Yes, it is. No. No. You know why you don't like the Bible? Who said I didn't like the Bible? You must not. Well, you you say it's not God's word. You you say it's not God's word. Read the fucking Bible to know what the hell you're talking about. Boy, I'm about to fry you. Boy, I'm about to make you Snapchat famous. Boy, what you got on your face? Boy, you ugly as hell. Hey, what's up? What what a what a big guy he is. What? What a big guy he is. Messing with a teenager. Teenager? Yeah. Hey, brother Kevin. Brother Kevin. Hey, what do you got to say to my Snapchat party? Stop sinning. This man says stop sinning. Follow Jesus. Follow these nights. Can you know that the image of Jesus today was based off me? You know you are the Holy Spirit. Yep, I do. That's why I don't agree with it. Jesus didn't have long hair. The Bible says it's a shame for a man to have long hair. And so, you think Jesus was married? No, of course not. Then why is Jesus and Lacey and Tom Carr, they married at like 20 years of age? Not everybody. It's tradition. Not everybody. Everybody's married at 20 years old. There's people who are just servants of God and never get married. All throughout the Bible. Elijah, Elisha. They never got married. In fact, most of the prophets never got married. They were all Jewish. Why hypocrites? Why hypocrites? Well, because hell awaits them. Okay, in the Bible does it say, love your not neighbor, so all that shit? Say it again. The Bible, the Ten Commandments, says love your neighbors, right? Well, the Ten Commandments doesn't, but the Bible says, love your neighbor as yourself. It's the second greatest commandment. Uh, but we're, we're all your neighbors here, right? We're your That's why I'm loving you. Okay, so why are you telling us we're going to go to hell for being If this real? building was on fire and people didn't know about it, wouldn't you yell fire to them and tell them to get out? And that's only saving them from physical death. I'm trying to save you from eternal death. 
Of course he's loving to tell you you're going to hell if you're going to hell. I don't want you to go there. I want you to do this. Stop your sinning, believe the gospel, obey Jesus. That's what I want you to do. I don't want you to, this is not me saying I want you to go there. I'm saying, listen, warning, hell awaits. I used to be a lot of these things on this sign, but I chose to repent of my sins and trust in Jesus Christ and follow him. Repent means you have to have already done it. You can't repent something you haven't done. I said, how are you supposed to stop sinning? Okay, well, that's a good question. Well, you, you can change the future. You can't change the past. You can be forgiven of your past. You can be cleansed of your past, pardoned of your past, but you can change your present and future. No, you're not burning in hell. But if you don't repent, you will. That, I mean, no, you're, I don't think you really are. I think you're just saying that because you're in front of lots of people. That's what I think. Fuck yourself. Fuck yourself. Where's the Peter? We'll be here for a while. Love Trump, hate. Right? Yeah, I love. I hate the Trump. Oh yeah. I hate the Trump. Maybe it would be a little more effective if it was just not a sign, but maybe like Bibles. Here you go. Have a blessed day. Well, I mean, depends what you mean by effective. Those guys are a effective shit. to me. Effective to me is not uh, having people like you. Effective to me is getting the word of God, both the good news and the bad news, to as many people as possible. And so I think I've been a very effective today. I think that some people take it harder and they think that's fine. I think you do that. You're so awkward. What is judgment? I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. People didn't like Jesus too. They crucified him. I mean, people didn't like Paul. They stoned him to death. They whipped them. So I mean, all kinds of bad things happen to them. So, okay. I haven't had that kind of stuff happen to me yet. Yeah? You do more like a marketing, but in a marketing, you know, you probably do is well, you are, nobody wants to do about your sale, about your product, you know that. We're going to be packed in hell, man, if the whole rest are going. Hey, Jack it. Jack it. I just think that it's. Uh, well, not necessarily. Um, I can't think of a good reason to get one personally. What if it is a Christian tattoo? Well, I, I don't think God anywhere commands you to get Christian tattoos. What he does command you to do is live holy. He does, hold on. He doesn't command you to not. No, that's why I can't say necessarily it's not it's sinful, but it would be what your heart is. I mean, I think a lot of people when they get tattoos are doing it for self-glorification or some way. You know, they're just, they're not doing it for the glory of God. So I, I think some people maybe have done that in the past, maybe gotten a tattoo for the glory of God. I, I don't know for sure. But uh, oh, personally, yeah. I would never get one. Oh, now, when I was yeah. a sinner, I wanted to get one. Oh, yeah. Are you saying that oh, now, now yeah. No, I live a holy life now. What? So you're saying that you... But let me finish, oh, yeah. finish what I was saying before we get into that conversation, oh, yeah. whether I sin or not. What? Uh, before, when I was a sinner, I wanted to get a tattoo. Yeah. You did too. Oh, yeah. I was going to get a Chinese word on my chest that said uh, insane. Oh, yeah. Or fear no man. Oh, yeah. Something like that. That's what I was planning on getting. Oh, yeah. But, but I mean... What, what God does yeah. command us to do, we know for oh, sure, yeah. is to live holy oh, yeah. and to preach the word of God oh, to, to as many people as we can. So, so, oh, so yeah. if we shouldn't replace, oh, yeah. some people want to share oh, their faith. Chill. Some people want to share their faith just by tattooing on their arm. But I'm saying the way God has prescribed for a Christian to share their faith is with their words. And by living a holy life, not by tattooing on their arm. May I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm a Christian too, and I believe in God, and I believe that He loves us, and that He loves you, and He loves me, and He loves every sinner all the same. Even when we sin, He still loves us. But how can? But are you saying that once you become? Yeah, Kai Omega. Yeah. Okay, so a few things there. Kai Omega. God does love everybody unconditionally in this way that He sent His Son to die for them. Okay, none of us deserve that, and He wants everybody to be saved. That's That's God's unconditional love towards everybody. Okay, but He doesn't he, like the relationship He has with me, and the relationship He has with a non-Christian is completely different. Okay, the relationship He has with me is a loving relationship where He we we speak to each other. So do you not? Think he loves non-Christians. You're not letting me finish. 
I already told you he loved non-Christians. I told you how he loves non-Christians. Right but, but he doesn't have a relationship with them that's a good relationship. He's going to judge them and send them to hell. No, you're alive. Okay, so, so no. what, what, was God sent the people who are going to be in hell? Does God love them while they're in hell? Of course not. He loves them because they're his creation. He, he cannot be around the people that are in hell because they have sinned, and that is a barrier. But it doesn't mean that he does not love them. That's, that's the point I'm making. That's the distinction I'm making. But is that he does love them. In the way I described earlier, yes, I agree with that, but not in a way where there's a relationship with them. Okay, there's a relationship that like a judge has with a criminal. But if someone, so I mean, a judge and a, a just judge in a courtroom has some kind of relationship with the criminal he's judging, but it's not a good one for the criminal. Not from his perspective, it's not. But and, he keep going, keep going, keep going. Hey, oh yes, he does. Yes, he does. He does love them. If he's a just judge, he does. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I can't. I don't know every judge is hard. I, I can't tell you that that every judge loves every criminal. But I'll say this: that if he's a just judge, he does love them, and he's doing what is right for that person, at a care for them and at a care for the rest of the community. And that's what God does. When he, when he has Judgment Day, he's going to care for that people in the way they need to be cared for by punishing them for all eternity. And he's going to care for the rest of the community who have chosen to forsake their sins and follow him and live righteously by allowing them into his kingdom. So how come you don't preach in his love and instead you preach in hate? Well, no, I don't do either one. I don't submit to either one of those questions. I don't, I don't do that. I don't believe that. This is not hate. This is God's word. Is God's word hateful? It's not hate. I don't believe that. This hate. is the truth. But if that's hate to y'all, why y'all giving it attention? That's just that's my point. If it's hate, hey, listen. I'm just ignore. I'm curious. I mean, I'm not. Listen. I mean, the Bible has. Listen. The Bible has bad news, and the Bible has good news. And what I get from students a lot of times, this could be what you're saying, is all they want me to do is preach the good news. But that's not what Jesus did. That's not what the apostles did. Not what the Old Testament prophets did. They preached the good news and the bad news. That's why everybody hated Jesus. And so that's right. In fact, Jesus said in John 7, 7, the whole world hates me because I testify of it that his works are evil. He didn't, he didn't say the whole world hates me because I tell them I love them. But shouldn't, but shouldn't you um, preach in the way that is most successful? This is successful. See, you're defining success differently than I am. Successful to me is not getting as many converts as you can. Success, what's the point of it if you're not getting converts? Well, I'm going I'm, I'm to get to that. Success to me is preaching the whole counsel of God to as many people as possible. But if they don't convert, then what? That's they women. They have free will. I can't make them convert. No, but you can preach in a way that. Is that ego or the like, ego? No, no. The Bible never says go into all the world and attract people to yourself. Apparently, this attracts people. Go, listen, I've had, I've had hundreds of people around me the whole day, and you're going to tell me they're not attracted to the message. They may lash out in anger, just like they did to Jesus and the apostles. No, I'm not. I pushing away. You're pushing them away. Who am I pushing away? They're entertained by you. No, that is not true. I have not entertained one Raise person. Raise your hand if you're entertained by him. Raise your hand if he's making a change in your life. Wait a minute now. I can't make a change in someone's life. You could try. And, and wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. You, now, you know what you just did? You appealed to the world to see if I was doing what was right. You didn't appeal to the word. You appealed to the world. To see what they thought. So I appeal the to the word. I appeal to the. I appeal to the word. To see if what I'm doing is right, and what I'm doing is biblical, and you haven't proven otherwise. All you've proven is that people don't like me. So what? They didn't like Jesus. I don't care if you like me. I'm not here to be your friend. I only want you to remember my name. I don't even care about that. I want you to remember the name of Jesus. And I want you to know that if you're a sinner, judgment is coming for you. If you don't forsake your sins and trust in Christ, you're going to end up in hell. But hey, listen, if you want to use your free will properly, if you want to forsake your sins, trust in Christ, follow him, let him transform you, become born again the Holy Spirit, then praise the Lord. I'll thank God with, with the angels for the change in your life. Any interest in knowing how Jesus actually feels about you? Come talk to me. Yeah, go talk to her. I will let you know. Yeah, go over there. Because she's the expert. Go over there. I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, please do that. Because you, you've been trying to tell me only this whole time that I'm wrong and you haven't given me one Bible verse. I've given you Bible verse after Bible verse after Bible verse. You have not given me one. So for you to somehow and, and for you to somehow assume that you love the world that he gave his one keep reading all right i have a question whosoever, whosoever believes in him shall not perish but, but will have everlasting life keep going that means 
No, no, keep going. Keep going. Let's go to verse 17. Okay. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but, but the world through him might be saved. Yes. He who believes in him is not... Hold on, hold on. I'm not done. I'm not done. Listen to the word of God. He. No, I didn't. He who believes in him... No, I didn't help you. You're not listening. You're not listening. You have to open your ears and close your mouth to listen. He who believes in him is not condemned. He who does not believe is condemned already. Because he's not believed in the name of the only begotten of God. So, so who here has believed in Jesus and is living holy? Raise your hand. You're not living holy? So according to Jesus, you're condemned. Try to live holy, and John, let's let's continue on. John three nineteen. And this is the condemnation that's come into the world. That the light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light, that his deeds may be clearly seen. They have been done in God. Hey. So you want to emasculate God's word and just preach the good parts hey. and, and, re and remove it from its context yeah. and everything yeah. else Jesus yeah. said. Yeah. And you remove the bad news because it makes you uncomfortable. Are you smoking? And because it makes men not like you and you're more concerned with men liking you than with God liking you. So Period. Excuse me. Period. I know Jesus likes me. We, me. we have conversations. If you don't preach the bad news, hey. you're on the wrong track. Hey. I got a there's a way to preach the bad news without me. Well, please, please, experts, show me how to do it over there. Are you spoil your mom? Show me how to do it. Why are you spoil your mom? Why? Are you spoil your mom? You you preach the good news to attract them to church. They go to church, then they learn the Bible verse for that, please. Bible verse that says you would preach the good news to attract them to church, and then you get them saved. He did not come to the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through. Or here's a better idea. So you're condemning the world. No, no. And what is there after that? He who does not believe is condemned already. Okay. So if they don't believe, they're already condemned. The so God's already condemned them. I'm revealing to them their condemnation that they might be saved. No, they don't. They reject it. There's a lesbian over there who thinks she's okay with God. But they know... What we're, we know what we're doing wrong because the Holy Spirit reveals it in us. It says that in the Bible. The Bible says, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every yeah, yeah, yeah. creature. And the gospel is yeah, Jesus coming Preach out. the word oh, in God. season and out of season. Convince, oh. rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. Okay, I've been rebuking and exhorting you all day and you don't receive it because you don't like it. You love your sin instead. How many people, honestly, do you believe after this that hey. you've today will go hey. to church because of you? Yeah, you, you, you don't get it. Hey. You still don't get it. I'm not trying to get people to go to church. Well, you should be. Well, then, well, says who? Where does the Bible say, go in all the world and bring them to church? Hey. Uh, witness. Hey. Uh, it doesn't say that. Hey. You've been deceived. Hey. Yeah, you know what? You've been hey. deceived by your pastors and churches saying, well, just bring them here. I'll, I'll hey. evangelize them. Hey. No, a disciple hey. evangelizes themselves. Excuse me. They go into all the world. They preach the gospel. People get saved. And then they come to the church and get discipled. Hey. That's the way it works. So do you think that the Excuse whole world me. is wrong, but you're right? No, I think the whole world is wrong, and God is right. Excuse and I'm on God's side because I believe His word and Excuse obey His word. You're part of the world. Excuse me. Okay. No, that's not what I mean by world. Hey, hello, I'm right here. Oh, Thank God, you. I love this okay. tobacco. So, you believe in the Bible, right? I believe in, I obey, I memorize, I study, I teach, I preach. Okay, all right. Yes, all right. the Bible, so, Bible, Bible, Bible. Bible says nobody's perfect, correct? No, the Bible doesn't say that. What does the Bible say? Yes. The, Bible said in, the Bible said in Genesis chapter 6 and verse 9, it says, This is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generations. Noah walked with God. Job is called perfect, blameless, upright, one who fears God and shuns evil. The, pa the parents of John the Baptist keeps all the commandments of God perfectly. So yes, there's people in the Bible who are righteous, people in the Bible who obey God. I know it sounds alien to you because you can't imagine even going a day without your sin, but it is possible. You can live in victory. You can live a holy life. You don't have to be a sinner. You're a sinner by choice, not because of Adam and Eve, not because of your parents, not because of the world, because of your own choice. People disagree with this. Why they suffering around you? Listen, man, it's God's word. It's God's word. It attracts them. They know it's the truth. That's true.
You know, it's the truth. I was just wondering, like, why, like, what you're trying to promote today? Like, why just the Bible? Jesus Christ? Well, obviously, he's trying to promote the people who care. Both sides. The bad news and the good hey, news. Can I ask you a question, Good sir? news. Hey, sir. Good news. Sir? And the bad news. I'm trying to put both of them. What the Bible says. Man. Ma'am. Hey, man. Can I give you something to read? Hey, man. I was just wondering. Take it with you. Why you expose your mom? Why? Are you expose your mom? Why? Why? Yeah, you need to ask my question. Why? Why? You want to preach, brother? Yeah, of course you can. There you go. So you're just like trying to promote, like, promote God and everything like that? The Word of God, the Bible, the Scriptures, Jesus Christ dying for your sins, okay. that you might be saved. So, so you're not like trying to, like the other guy that was here, like, you know, calling people out? What do you mean by that? Well, the other guy that was here, like, was, you know, being like, um, he's just being like very, uh, hey, I racist. And, uh, yeah, I'm never that racist. Right? Okay, no. no. Uh, Just God's word, pure God's word. I'm not here to unnecessarily offend people. I'm not here to provoke people. You gotta find God before you tell them. They don't find God, so they're gonna disagree with you. Well, that's why I'm here, so they can they can hear the truth. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So you gotta preach the word of God. I'm glad you're doing it like in a better way than he was. Like, I mean, I'm not. I'm not. I don't know who you're talking about. I'm not judging that person. I can't. I didn't see it, so I can't judge the person. I'm just telling you what I'm doing. So I don't know what they were doing. I've had people misrepresent me before and tell lies about me so I, I wouldn't want to do the same thing to somebody else. The reason why Jesus did this because back in this time he was so successful because everybody found God. But no, no, this is 2016. No, this is exactly what this God is 26. No, this is exactly what God wants us to do. 26. God's methods don't change. Nobody is finding God. No, man, listen, listen, man. I'm telling. Listen. I agree with you. But, li but listen, listen. Just, just, just because. Don't listen to the objections of the wicked, man. You need to follow God's word. Psalm one says, "Blessed is a man who does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly." You walk in the counsel of the ungodly, you will cease to be blessed. But you got to preach in a way that people understand. I, they understand just fine. I've had no problem with understanding. Understand. No, they understand. They're rejecting it. They don't like it. There's a difference between rejecting and not liking it and not understanding so, it. So, preach in a way that they will, would not reject it, you know? No, that's impossible. The only way they, no, the only, pay, only way they won't reject it is they have hearts that re respond to message properly. It's their heart that's the problem, not the message or the messenger. Or even the method. The message, the, me the method, or the messenger is not the problem. The problem is the hearer. I mean, you look at the parable of the sower, right? He sowed seed on four different kinds of ground. Was the problem the seed? Was the, pro was the problem the seed? No. Was the problem the sower? No, the problem was the ground. And people here have different hearts towards God and His Word. Some of them are just completely opposed to it. Some of them are for it. I want to be a motivational speaker, right? Well, well, I gotta speak non-professionally. I can't speak confessionally because people. Want listen, that's that's how I'm, I'm not a model, I'm not a motivational speaker though. I mean, that's that's different field, man. I mean, no. I'm a preacher of the gospel. Okay. I'm preacher of gospel is not, it's not a motivational speaker. I mean, that's like Joe Osteen type nonsense. I'm not a Joe Osteen fan. I'm just a preacher of Jesus Christ. Just want people to find a higher power. You know, spirituality is important. Mine is Jesus. But. No, spirituality is not important. It's important that you follow Jesus Christ. That's important. You obey and follow Jesus. Spirituality is not important, man. The spirit, I mean, there's demon spirits, man. Maybe, maybe that's someone's spirituality. I mean, if you want to be in, in par, in, on par with the Holy Spirit, on track with the Holy Spirit, you got to read the Holy Word, which he inspired and wrote down through holy men of old. That's that's if you want to be spiritual, this is this is written by the Holy Spirit, man. That's the only kind of spirit you want. You don't want any kind of wicked spirit. And if you're going astray from this, man, you're not following the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit won't lead you to disagree with what His Word says, and won't dis won't make you won't lead you to sin either. Hold up. Make assumptions. No, no, I'm not making assumptions. I'm, I'm saying if. I'm saying if. Outsider means. I'm saying if. Away from the world, they don't follow what the world is. Listen, I'm, I'm saying if. I'm not applying these things necessarily to you. I'm just saying as a warning, as an exhortation to you, that if you want to be spiritual, you have to follow the Holy Spirit. I do. Okay. Well, good. Praise the Lord. It was really nice talking with you. Okay, Lexi. Good talking to you, too. It was really nice. Your friend gave me this. Huh? I'm going to watch it. Okay. I might stop being gay. Hopefully. I think I talked to you last time, too. Probably. It would have been like a year ago. Yeah. It was right over there. You were. That's a pretty good conversation then, too, I thought. It was. Well, there's a little less volume to it, but yeah. it was towards the end of the day like this, right in the middle of the day all day. Yeah. It was less hot. 
But honestly, stay you. I plan to stay Christ-like. Lord willing. But Christ-like. I promise you. I promise you. But your yes, yes, you know, be no. I like what you're doing. But your yes, yes, you know, be no. I promise you that I bet you I can make somebody follow the bad news, hear the bad news and the good news, but in a smart way. Well, go do it then. Instead of saying, go do it. It's not my time yet. Oh, come on, man. You're going to give me advice and you won't do it. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the